What is going on, StarCraft fans? We are back with another BSL. It's BSL 13. I am Mr. Nyokin and joined by Mr. Seriosity. What's going on, man? Hey, nothing much. Just here joining the cast again. Very excited to cast another uh, BSL season. Yeah, this is going to be your second appearance on the BSL. And you'll be casting with us, with us a lot this season as... I am going to be mixed in with Gypsy and you, and you're going to be mixed in with Gypsy. And we will start us off with Group A today. We've got an exciting lineup. We've got some NA players, and then we've also got two Europeans facing off. It's going to be Gypsy versus Dragon first. Then we've got Patak going up against Ziggy. What are your thoughts on this particular group? I think uh, we have two NA players hopefully advancing today, but... Uh, I still think there's a chance for either Zeke or P-Tech to move out. But I think for sure, Gypsy and Dragon are the two stronger players in this group. Yeah, Gypsy, he's on the up and up these days. He's actually been talking with Scan quite a bit lately, which I've been informed. And his TVP has gotten a lot better. Meanwhile, Dragon, he is a consistent face in the BSL. Always goes pretty deep, so this is going to be an exciting matchup. And then, of course, Patak versus Ziggy on the other side of the bracket. We saw Ziggy, I think, actually go round of 16 or round of, yeah, I think round of 16 recently. Meanwhile, I remember Patak playing, was it last season? I don't think he ended up making it out that far. But two very strong players, and they're looking to make it into the round of 16. Now, we are getting a look at the player statistics. Let me see here. Remember... Gypsy did well last season. He got into the top 12, but he had that, uh, let's just say memorable game versus OYG where he tapped out preemptively. So you know he's got that in the back of his mind. He does not want to make a mistake like that. Meanwhile, we're getting a look at Dragon stats. And even though we only have up until BSL 8, I remember him getting round of four, I think back in BSL 6 when I played. So he's definitely a very strong opponent. Yeah, that was uh, against uh, Bonneth that season. He managed to take two games off Bonneth, and that was yes. in the round of four. So that was the farthest Dragon has advanced, but you can see consistently round of 16 and uh, placing third in his group. So he's very, very close to breaking through again into the elimination bracket portion of the tournament. And Gypsy, like you said, almost made it last season. But that game against Oya, unforgettable. <laughs> yeah, definitely unforgettable. Of course, we're getting a look at the bracket, as I mentioned earlier. It's Gypsy versus Dragon, then Patak versus Ziggy. You guys probably watched NA versus EU Continent Battle recently, and Gypsy faced off versus Patak. I don't think Ziggy played for the EU lineup, but there is potential rematch scenario between Gypsy and Patak. So that will be quite interesting if that unfolds. Now, are we ready, Zero? Do we have the players... Uh, okay, so <laughs> we are not ready just yet. Uh, let's talk about the maps, because the maps this time around, quite interesting. We've got three ASL maps. I have to make sure I get them right. It's Ascension, Revolver, and Good Night, I would say, out of all the maps. Those are definitely the most standard. And then we have two new maps, Invertebrae, Wavelet, and then we have old maps. We've got Heartbreak Ridge and Aztec. Now, Seriosity, let me ask you, have you played on any of the new maps, like Vertebrae, Wavelet, or some yeah, of the new? I ASL? played. You have. I have. I have okay. played. Played on Wavelet, and this was in the, the tournament for the last spot. I had an incredible game where oh, yeah? almost entirely mined out my half of the map against a Zerg. And then at the end, Zerg has the last main, which is my, my last mining base, and I don't have any money. And I have six shuttles, 12 reavers. They do absolutely nothing, and I lost <laughs> that game. So that left me a pretty bad impression of the map. Uh, but it's a good map. It's a good map, solid map. Uh, I like maps where not every single base uh, is like uh, very easy to attack, other than the mains, of course. And... Just a solid four-player map. Vertebrae, I have not played. I don't know. I'm not that familiar with it. Yeah, the only game I saw of Vertebrae was NA versus EU, TT1 versus DeWalt. And um, 
going into that game, I was thinking, wow, there's a lot of stuff going on in this map, and it definitely <laughs> caught TT1 off guard with all the ramps everywhere. Let me ask you about Wavelet, because as somebody just looking at the map right now, uh, I had thoughts that this could be similar to Circuit Breaker because it kind of looks like it other than the huge line in the center of the map. Does it play like Circuit Breakers at all? Circuit Breaker has a wide open middle, so it's a little yeah. bit different in that sense. But the base layout is very, very similar. You can take a lot of bases pretty quickly on this map, even as Terran. Uh, but other than that, like the, the way the map works, like the way the fighting works on this map is very, very uh difficult i would say like you have yeah, to move your units around so they get to the right spots you gotta watch out yeah because there's so many ramps from the center of the map i imagine some types of contains like lurker or ling or whatever on hold position there uh, could be quite hard to deal with now vertebrae as i mentioned this map's got all types of stuff going on but we've got old maps too we've got heartbreak ridge we've got aztec as I'm going through this map list, I feel like more than likely we're going to see a lot of vetoes on Vertebrae, Heartbreak Ridge, Aztec, maybe Wavelet will get through. I think we're going to see a lot of the ASL maps and probably Wavelet. Uh, what's your experience on ASL maps? Uh, they're in the ladder these days. Have you been playing ladder? Yeah. Ascension, I like a lot. It's probably my favorite map since Silphid and ASL. Uh... It kind of reminds me of Blue Storm. Like someone said, it was three uh, three player Blue Storm. It has that feel. Not exactly the same though. Uh, Good Night is very solid. And what was the last map? It is Revolver. No, Revolver also as well. Like pretty good maps for from ASL. Yeah, Revolver and Good Night. I have not vetoed on the ladder, and I agree that they're they're pretty solid. I actually vetoed Ascension because. <laughs> Everybody calls it Blue Storm, but I actually feel like it's a mix between Blue Storm and Tau Cross with the open open mains where you have the ability to go for drops, like Lurker Drop, and I just don't want to deal with that, so I have that vetoed for now. We're getting a look at Revolver. For those of you that have been watching ASL, this map gets picked quite a bit, and one of the things to mention about Revolver is it's like a 25 second rush distance from top to bottom so if we get a Terran versus Zerg or some type of bust they're gonna get to your base in a heartbeat and we may see somebody get caught out of position we do see that there's not that many games played Terran versus Zerg seems to be pretty even I'm surprised at the Zerg versus Protoss stats it's one and six but it's, zero a, has it's a really oh. strong uh yeah I want to it's a really really strong Protoss versus Zerg man uh, okay so Dragon, if he gets Patak, uh, maybe getting a free one here if if that's the case and picks Revolver. But Zero has given me the confirmation that players are ready. So with that said, guys, we are going to be getting into Gypsy versus Dragon. It's going to be an NA battle going, and we're going to find out who's going to be moving on into the winners back winners bracket in just a couple minutes. All right, in the top left in the brown, it is Dragon. And then in the bottom left, in the red, it is the one and only, the Big Jip. So the right, Big Jip, it. oh, go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I was gonna say, so the Big Jip and I are pretty close and he talks strategies with me sometimes. And he's been telling me that uh, he really likes to go for the fast upgrade style, like the super fast. I'm talking like 3-2, you sit there for a long time and go for, you know, that really strong 200 max time you harass with vultures. Uh, what does Dragon like to do? Because I know you're a bit closer with Dragon than I am. Dragon also favors games that tend to go long in this matchup especially. But... Uh... Usually it's just gonna go two or three base arbiter, not likely to see the shuttle style mass storm or carrier from Dragon. So this should be a standard macro game, although Dragon does like to mix it up early game. Even though he'll streamline his build to end up in the same position usually, he does like to mix things in uh, early game. Yeah, so I think, did I play? I can't remember exactly where I played Dragon, but was it was in the recent few months. And I remember we played on Sylphid and it went split map. He was 
pretty far ahead, ended up going Arbiters, and I got lucky that he went Arbiters, and ended up camping the game out and getting my upgrades and winning. But after that, I've been seeing him actually go for Carriers quite often, so I'm curious to see if he will go for the Arbiters or Carriers here, because just looking at the map, I know there are a lot of ramps, high ground everywhere. It could be quite annoying to deal with. Now we do see that this is going to be well, I think it could be Gasless Expand. Is this a common build that Dragon likes to pull, or is it going to be a couple Zealots into Gas? I've seen him do a couple different openers. Are you familiar with the 13 Nexus uh, from Protoss, where they just go 11 gate, slightly delayed, then they go Nexus right after, and get yeah. a Zealot out, and then transition into a normal game, but they're getting a super fast Nexus, basically a 12 Nexus, but a little bit more defensive. I've seen him do that, but this is Zealot, core Zealot, so he's going to put on some pressure. He's delaying his Dragoons. He's delaying his Dragoon range. But the idea here is he's going to trade off his Zealot, hopefully kill Marines, and delay the factory with uh, the pressure. Yeah. And so... like you said, uh, the rush distance here is actually pretty short. Uh... Yeah, so there's no surprise that this is going to be a Zealot pressure build. Now, I have to say, not only is Gypsy Scout a little bit slow, it's obviously also going to the wrong position. So this Zealot Pressure could catch him off guard. But at the same time, I'm looking at the mini-map, and I don't see any Zealot move out. Did I, like, right? There's nothing coming. So this is an interesting opener from Dragon, because I feel like he got the first scout off. He got the dream situation. He knows exactly where he is. He knows that this is a close rush spawn, or rush distance. And then he didn't go for it. Yeah, interesting, because we did see that second pylon really fast. Uh, and Gypsy correctly scouting cross after not seeing uh, anything bottom right, because he's, he realized, okay, Dragon Scout is really fast. He has to be adjacent to me. And there's the first Dragoon. And this is a delayed Dragoon, about 15 seconds uh, slower than a normal Dragoon. So everything's late and uh, no Zealot from Dragon. So I think maybe once he saw Gypsy wasn't going Rax expand, he changed uh, his plan. Yeah, that's, I guess that could have been going through his head. I'm, I gotta say, I'm kind of confused by the opener, but as played, it's not a big deal. He's going to just go into the standard expansion off of the one goon. Vulture sneaked out. Now, Dragon is too good to fall for something like this. So I imagine, okay, even if that didn't get, in, okay, yeah. Even if that didn't get intercepted, I'm pretty sure second goon would be on hold position on the ramp. Yep. Yeah, yep. it is right there. So it wouldn't have done any damage anyways. Yeah, rule of thumb as Protoss, if you're going to go out with your first Dragoon and you have no scouting up the front, you got to keep that second Dragoon back. You don't know if Protoss or if Terran made that add-on right away or if they went into tank. So just a safety measure, second Dragoon can't move out. All right, well, there is the fast armory that I was talking about. 425-ish armory. Uh, for those of you out there that want to know whether Gypsy nails his build or not, that means that he's going to be hitting plus three around 14, 45, 15 minutes. That's when he's going to be looking to make a move on Dragon. He could also make a move at 2-1, but that means he would be moving at around like 11.30 or so. I don't think he'd be at max at that point. So Dragon's going to have a lot of time to build up that Arbiter count that you were mentioning that, that he may go for. You were saying that he's not Shuttle Man. So we'll see what he wants to do with this robo, because we haven't seen the observatory or support bay just uh, decided on yet. Okay, so Gypsy uh, has no information on Dragon's build. Uh, this would be a little bit risky, like if Dragon went Citadel after Nexus or something, but he is planning mines. He has a lot of map presence. No no, uh, like official scouting on what Dragon followed up with, but. This is a pretty safe and solid opener. Yeah, this is also a pretty safe and solid opener from Gypsy too. I have to say this that this mine opener is probably the best versus someone like Dragon who plays defensive a lot. If this is versus some like B rank Protoss, for example, who's just at your natural ranging your bunker, just rallying the gate, I think this would have backfired because this tank would have been so late. But versus yeah. Dragon in particular, this is a good opener and you can see that this is just what Dragon does. He's already set up for dropship potential. Yeah, when you see Vulture opener, there's always the potential for a fast drop. And uh, Dragon's just prepared. He has not a nice pylon spread. Dragoon's covering all the entrances and just macroing. Uh, floating a little bit here on minerals. 
observer is finally out and he's actually gonna go and take his third right away with this uh first observer yeah now gypsy has told me that he's been informed that when he sees observer opener as opposed to reaver opener to just go ahead and build an on location third base now when he told me that I was thinking like, I don't know if you can exactly do that. And with this opener, if Gypsy did do that, that would be a bit crazy because he cut his unit count quite a bit to get his fast upgrade. So you see he's actually going into the third factory. That is going to be a high ground command center. Uh, nope, high ground starport and then command center, I imagine. But everything so far, uh, both players just building up. Yeah, and uh, it's gonna be important here because Jack is gonna come in and see everything. And basically from here, Dragon can decide, okay, I'm going to take a fourth, or maybe I'm going to try to bust when he eventually tries to take that third. But there's that first observer, going to get sniped. He's only going to see the three factors. He's not going to see a starport, which is key here. Seeing that starport lets you know, okay, this is upgrade style. And here's that second observer taking a different path. Yeah, now when he comes in here and sees that the starport's already done, he's going to know that this was a fast upgrade build. If, if I was Protoss and had my Observer sniped and saw the Terran already has three factories, like, I'd be a little bit worried that a timing is coming, but not gonna... Okay, that is an add-on onto the starport. Was not expecting that, and I still don't see a command center. So, actually, the longer this game goes, the more I'm thinking that this could... Okay, never mind. I was thinking it could have been, like, a seven fact that we saw Flash pull out a couple years ago, but not gonna be the case. Yeah, you know, two base, two one. That was uh, for a while. That was very common, but this is not a particularly strong map. The third isn't that hard to take, and here we see. Yep, Stargate and Archive. So this is going to be Arbiters from Dragon. He's on four gateways, and he could probably take a fourth. Yep, he was actually going to go and do that, but Gypsy with the Vulture movement able to deny that. Yeah, and as mentioned before, Dragon <laughs> pretty much just nailing his build. You can see that the Stargate and Templar Archive are about to finish at like 8.45. I mean, that's just pretty much typical Arbiter timing. And that's gonna allow Dragon to build up a lot of Arbiters versus Gypsy's specific opener. Vultures try and run into the third base. Don't Doesn't find any success, because again, Dragon is just very good with his goons in the early game. Like, you can't harass this guy. Rarely do I build Vultures versus him and get any damage done. So Gypsy's just gonna have to accept the fact that fourth base is going to go up and try and just play dragon in a macro game. Yep, fourth nexus there. Gypsy going up to five factories. Third command center about to flow away and take that third dragon. Uh, can't actually pressure this because the uh, the build he opted for with only four gateways, he can't really put on a lot of pressure. And finally, adding cannons. And this is what you do when you're facing upgrade stuff. You don't really want to add cannons unless there's drop until after your fourth nexus. You have enough goons, you can cover all the entries to your base with just uh, Dragoons. Don't have to worry about Vulture harassment uh, if you can just uh, zone out the Vultures. And you get your Nexuses up, your Gateways up, and then you finally add some cannons. You really don't want to advance into cannons too early in this matchup. All right, well, we see Gypsy taking his third base and Dragon's gonna have his fourth base coming up pretty soon. So he's gonna be up a base for quite a long time, but Vulture's doing a good job, I guess, controlling the right side of the map, making sure Dragon doesn't explode on like five, six bases. We do see the first dropship out, which I will say versus Dragon in particular is a bit surprising because he's so good with the Dragoon defense. But you could see that there is a little bit of a high ground on the overlooking the natural. So Gypsy may be able to find some success there. Fourth base is done for Dragon, not mining just yet. But again, Goon's already in position. Yeah, Dragon just cut, cutting off all the ramps so Vultures can't get in. Doing a good job at that. And Gypsy, well-established slayer. So he's going to see, uh, we're going to see a large... Uh, explosion of factories at Gypsy's base and also gateways like Dragon was in four gateways for a very long time that should go up to 10 12 15 Yep, the vultures getting into the fourth base. It's gonna get a couple of probes, but nothing impactful Now Gypsy I still don't see a fourth command center being built just yet, but we did see a lot of factories going down I think he's at seven now, so he's gonna start. No, he's at five actually so 
I guess he can stay on a lower factory count for now because he did just power and get those fast upgrades, but he's going to need to put down some factories pretty soon because Dragon's about to be maxed. Now, let me ask you, as a Protoss player, you're going to max out soon. Is there something you look for that makes you decide, okay, I can go for the bust, I can, uh, if I nail the stasis, I can definitely bust him, or is there something you look for that... Well, I can go in for a recall. Oh, actually, I think the replay might be busted. It's live? <laughs> I, I don't know. Oh, it's not re Okay. Ooh, that's a lot of idle probes. I mean, Gypsy's hiding factory still. Yeah, I'm not sure. Well, I, I, I'm a bit... <laughs> I was going to say I'm a bit shocked. But there's gonna be no bingos today, guys. On the Reddit, I saw that was that was a bingo piece. You should definitely check out that Reddit thread if you want to play along with Caster Bingo. But unfortunately, I do think that the replay is broken. Not just be or the game is broken. Not just because the probes are idle, but also because Dragon only has six gates and it's 12 minutes, and he's floating 3k. <laughs> so I'm a bit sad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I mean, well. What can I say? I think if you, if, pro, if Terran over harasses, like you're training vultures for probes, uh, at that point of the game where Protoss is about to be maxed, it can open Terran up for a bust. If Dragon were to add the gateways faster, like if we were to stay on four Nexus instead of take a fifth and go up to 10, 15 gateways, then Dragon could bust there. But as far as, I mean, but yeah, this is definitely broken because we're transferring probes to a base that doesn't exist. So, <laughs> oh my gosh, what a... Yeah. Um, I think we should just stay in the game simply because... Well, you can put the screen on casters if you want, but stay in the game because if we leave, I think the players might be confused and they, and they might leave. Oh. <laughs> right? I don't, I don't want that to happen. So, yeah, so, uh, unfortunately, guys, to start off BSL, we've got a Blizzard, <laughs> Blizzard shenanigan, and we're not going to, well, we can load up the replay, but we're not going to be able to find out uh, what happened in that game, at least just yet, but it looked like it was just going to be a standard, standard game. Yeah. And I think Gypsy was going to go for that 3-2 when you commit to harassing that much. Like, you're just trading out vultures so you have more tanks later, right? Yeah, that's the purpose, is you buy time with the vultures, you get, like, 30 tanks with your 15-minute 3-2 timing, and you just kill everything. So, so uh, it's, it's very strong, but you're very weak in the early game. That's why Gypsy there ended up going to three factory and delaying his command center for so long. Makes sense. Um... I'm a bit thrown off because I was not expecting already <laughs> this to happen, but somehow Blizzard just finds a way to mess up. Mess in up ASL game, in no particular. Less. Yeah, because <laughs> I've been doing ASL the past two seasons and there's never an issue. It's just as soon as PSL starts, they're like, get him. Get get zero. We gotta <laughs> we gotta make sure that this is a corrupted game. All right, well, let's talk about something else let's talk about i guess the old maps we were talking about the maps earlier vertebrae and wavelet are the new maps then we've got the current asl maps heartbreak ridge and aztec is making a resurgence or making a reappearance here my opinion heartbreak ridge it's gotta go aztec it's gotta go <laughs> what, what are your thoughts as a protoss player on, on this on playing on these maps well i think uh heartbreak ridge in particular is a pretty hard map for both Protoss and Terran, but especially Protoss against Zerg. It's just a map where, I mean, it's hard to wall for one. Like that's just like the older a map is, the harder it is to wall. It's a pretty hard map to wall on. You can do a wall with the, the gas, but as soon as you make an assimilator, it no longer works. Uh, there's the back temples as well that leads to a lot of shenanigans. Drop is extremely strong on this map. Proxies, I mean, everything's uh, 
It's not a good map for Protoss. And for Terran, <laughs> I imagine it's even worse. Terran, yeah, it, there's a lot of drop potential, which is why Ascension is also a veto for me on the ladder. Like, look at the mains, completely wide open. But if you look at Ascension, just looking at the angles that drops could come in, I mean, it's the same thing. So I, I, I do find it weird that more Zerg players don't drop or more Protoss players don't just go really ham on the, on the shuttle play. But yeah, Heartbreak Ridge. Oh my gosh. Watching people mine out that back mineral or killing the temples and then just lurkers running into your base or lurkers being dropped or reavers being dropped. Or even I've faced people cannon rushing me, Terran versus Protoss. There's all types of stuff that you can do on this map that's really difficult to deal, deal with, with as, as all the races. races. Like, like you, you can, I think you can even build it. Is it a pylon or a depot at bottom at the mid left position and just completely wall them in? I can't remember yeah. exactly. You can make a pylon and then, yeah, it's just, they yeah. can't get out. <laughs> yeah, I, this map is very difficult to play. So I'm not going to be surprised if we don't see this until like a round of four or something. Uh, but what about Aztec? Aztec, I mean, it's Aztec, okay. It's but... a little more uh, modern. Like it has yeah. four bases, reasonably easy to take. Mineral only third, something we see a lot. And I actually like mineral only thirds for, in terms of balance purposes, it makes it a lot uh, better as a map. Three player map is also intriguing, but it has a few features that make it a really hard map to play on. Reverse ramp. Uh, is this actually the old version of Aztec that doesn't have the droppable gnats? Because they added that in later. Yeah, it looks like. Okay, okay. But this map, is an incredible zerg map incredible like this might be in in pvz like everything about this map makes it hard to play the mineral only third the the few gas bases you can actually take like if you're protoss you can get the four bases and then you have to take a middle base and then from there it's like how do you take any more like what what can you do yeah and uh, it, it's very easy to backstab. It's easy to get us around in the middle. Like we just saw Hawk versus Bonneth in NA versus EU and Hawk dominated. Like he just crushed. And yeah, as you mentioned, you can get three bases. That's fine. But how do you get the fourth one? I mean, it looks like you could get a fourth one. I don't want to say easily, but the fourth one, like for example, let's say Protoss is bottom right and you just expand horizontally. Bottom left, that's a high ground fourth base, but it makes you have to f travel so far that you can be out of position on the right side of the map. And, and even if you get that base, uh, how do you really get the fifth one or the sixth one? It, it is quite difficult. I, again, find this map hard to deal with drops in particular. And also, I have to point out as a Terran player, look at those minerals at top at the top middle position. That is a marine yes. graveyard, SCB <laughs> graveyard to Mutalis. Like, Mutas are just going to wreak havoc there. So, again, this is probably going to be a map they're going to see a lot of vetoes on. But it's I, I think it's a little bit better than Heartbreak Ridge. But yeah, I, I agree. Like, but I still think this is like all Zergs are going to love this map. Yeah. In yeah, every match. Yeah, Zerg for sure is not going to veto this. But Terran and Protoss, yeah, I think this is going to be auto veto. Oh, and in PVT, I would say Heartbreak Ridge is pretty good for Protoss early game. And. Yeah late game if they go carriers but otherwise like arbiter there's a point where if Terran just camps and doesn't move out like you can only you can hit the main only so many times before Terran is just uh they're just gonna defend the main and then slowly expand i think that like most two player maps is not great for arbiter style but aztec is just like uh one of the strongest pvt maps i think yeah for sure if if you're playing Heartbreak Ridge, Terran versus Protoss, you Terran players out there, either go for a timing and end the game real fast or play for split map. Because as Seriosity mentioned, if they go Arbors and you camp, more than likely you're going to win. Because Protoss just doesn't have a lot of bases to take. It'd be different if they were able to take like eight bases. But I mean, they can only take like five and then they run out of money. Yeah, so, and it's not yeah. a huge map. It's very yeah. cramped. You feel yeah. cramped. Yeah, and you go up, you have high ground everywhere. If there's ever a bad engagement and you're facing Tank Man, well, goodbye army. And you can get across the map very quickly. So 
Heartbreak Ridge may not get vetoed as much as I think, but we'll see. So again, guys, we are waiting on Gypsy versus Dragon to complete. Both players play for a long game, so we may be here for a while. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, let, what do you want to do, Seriosity? Uh, up to you. Up to you if we take a break or just continue. Let's take a break, and then we'll come back with Gypsy versus Dragon, and we'll find out who's going to be... Well, we're not going to find out. We're going to watch that replay and find out who's going to be moving into the winner's bracket. Oh! We got the replay already. Okay, so 20, 25-minute game, so that doesn't really give it away. So let's, let's get into the replay. Right. Yeah, let's go, guys. I want to see... How funny would it be if it's not broken? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think this is a good a good timing. So we have moved into about the 7.30, eight minute mark, which means Dragon should be going into the Templar Archive Stargate timing. This is pretty much standard timing for PVT. Meanwhile, we do have Gypsy's third factory about to complete. We have his starboard has completed and we're gonna see the command center coming down. Uh, so. Let me ask you, as a Protoss player, what's your ideal number of Arbiters? I think it's four. I think that's a great number. I think anywhere between four and six. Uh, but the thing is, Arbiters are... Like, you never want four with your army. It just makes it worse to control. And then if you, an EMP lands, all of a sudden, you have uh, useless Arbiters, useless supply. So it's good to have four with the army and then two back. You have those two back just gathering energy. Uh, and then they don't take up that much supply because if you over make arbiters, then your standing army is uh, a lot weaker. Yeah, I think six is the upper limit because, as you mentioned, they do take up a lot of supply. It's four and times six, that's 24 supply. Looks like we are skipping a little bit farther ahead to 10 minutes. And as a Terran player, generally you only have like one or two vessels. Now, I know Gypsy does build a few more, sometimes three or four. But it is painful to land like two EMPs directly on an arbor and you're like, yes, I hit both of them. And then two more, <laughs> two more come in and it's like, geez, how many do they have? And they've like have the most energy out of all of them and they nail like four stasis, which get like six tanks each. It is heartbreaking. Now here comes that drop and well, oh, dragon's ready. Yeah, it's gonna get shut down. And I thought we were gonna see potentially like a two vulture, one tank drop because it does have the high ground. So to see the four vultures, I'm not too sure what Gypsy was, of course he was trying to get into the main, but I think versus Dragon in particular, who is so defensive as you see, that that was a bit of a questionable move because a dropship is not the most expensive, but it does cost the same amount of gas as a factory. Now we do see, Vulture is getting into the fourth base, and he is going to kill a decent amount of probes here. You can see that the worker count is pretty much even. So actually, that's a pretty good sign for Gypsy here that he's been even on workers, I'm, I'm guessing, for the majority of the game. Yeah, and uh, when Protoss, they want to hit that ideal 65 probe range and then not make too many more. Uh, because again, if you make too many, then your ground army is so weak. Look at these Vultures. They just ignore the cannon. They don't care. Yeah. Like... <clears throat> But Gypsy's buying a lot of time here. Like, this is hurting Dragon because Dragon's having to make more probes and not add gateways in another main, for example. So every every minute that Gypsy can buy where Dragon stays on this low gateway count is going to make his push at, at around 15 minutes a lot stronger. And then here's... This is 3-2. Oh, oh, this is 2-1? Wait, what happened here? He missed his upgrade timing. So unfortunately, <laughs> something went wrong for Gypsy and he missed it because it should be done. 2-1 should be done. When you go for 430 armory, or basically whenever you build your armory, as soon as it starts, add seven minutes, that's when plus two is going to complete. He started at 430. That means this should have been done at 1130. So he's going to have missed it for about a minute and a half. And that's actually a huge, huge miss. So because he's missed, we may actually see a 2-1 move out. And again, Gypsy is continuing to harass with the vultures. He's going to find some more success into the probe line. 
There's a lot of cannons here, so they're going to get cleaned up. Oh, no, they're not. He actually saves, what, three of them? Or five? Or Sorry, he ends up losing three of them and trades for a few probes, so not the worst. And Gypsy's done a good job to keep up in the supply. Look at this. He's still at 150. Oh, man. Oh, okay. So this, this type of two tank drop, this can be extremely powerful if you can land uh, to uh, uh, plant the mines from the vultures so they cut off the dragoons. If you can get these two tanks here with vulture support, then it becomes impossible for Dragon to defend efficiently. They just have to commit a large army there, especially since Dragon doesn't have a shuttle. And unfortunately, not well coordinated uh, by Gypsy, but good attempt there. Yeah, good attempt. That was, if he had laid the mines like you were saying, that would have been a fantasy style drop. Now he does intercept some of the probes. Remember, we saw those probes transferring top right before the game crashed. So we do know that Gypsy intercepted them. And Gypsy has done a good job to keep Dragon's Econ really low. Like he's still not maxed at 1330 as a Protoss with four bases. Remember, he went straight to four bases. So that's a bit surprising to see that he's not maxed. But the first two Arbiters are out. And if Gypsy does wait for 3-2, we couldn't get into that scenario where it could be four or five Arbiter's out, but I think Gypsy's gonna go right now, and he has double vessel already. As I mentioned, Gypsy is someone that actually does build multiple vessels, so Dragon does need to be careful with his two or three Arbiters, because they could both get EMP'd. Right, and Dragon has 12 gateways in his main. Uh, no other gateways there. He's gonna add the ones in the other main, and this is actually pretty important. You want these other gateways up before the first fight. And here we go. We've seen the large gateway explosion there. Gypsy not max is uh -oh. throwing away some vultures here. Or, or actually, is he going to trap the dragoons? Pretty close, dragging, uh, dragon microing away. But looks like most of the dragoons end up unscathed. And Gypsy lost a few vultures there. Now, Gypsy is floating a lot of gas. He's got 1,200 gas, and he already has double vessel. So he needs to start putting some more add ons onto his factories. Personally, I like going up to something like five because. You're going to be able to pump out so many tanks quickly. Your plus three is going to complete. You're not going to need that gas there. And that was a huge hit. He takes down like five out of the ten goons. But Dragon is moving al along the right side of the map. But look how strong these vultures are just by themselves taking down these goons. And this might be a big misstep from Dragon. Yeah, Dragon's actually going all the way around here. But this is a little bit risky. You don't want to get yourself trapped here. Vessel, see the Arbiters. Dragon has split the Arbiters. So it's going down. Dragon is finding an angle here, but this might not be the best engagement. He's going to come across a ramp with not his entire army, and there one Arbiter gets EMP. He has another one in the back. Four High Templars in the shuttle. This could be key, but he's just yeah, taking a lot of shots on his army. Yeah, he might kill the command center, but look how tiny his army is. I don't think he can engage the army. He's just going to run away, and so he's going to trade a command center for, let's say, 15 goons, because remember, he lost the first 10 goons in the beginning. That's a big win for Gypsy. You never want to be rebuilding goons. You're fine with rebuilding zealots, but not goons, not only because they're obviously more expensive, but they also take longer to build and cuts into your gas. Now there's the four Arbiters, which I think is the sweet spot. So we'll see if Dragon can land any of these stasis. We also saw that his shuttle has Templars. So there's a lot of AOE in the army. Okay, cleaning up some zealots additionally as well. I mean, Gypsy has to go right now. Dragon is currently rebuilding from one of his gateways, so he actually doesn't have this large army uh, right now. He he has the shuttle. Where is it? It's not actually being used. He has a high Templar in the back. Nice stasis there, but where is Gypsy's tanks? Yeah, where is Gypsy's army? It looks like they see in the back, but it, there's still a decent amount of damage here for Gypsy, and he overwhelms dragon's army because there just wasn't that much as you mentioned they were just being produced out of the gateways at dragon's main and that means that gypsy is going to continue to push across the map and even though he missed his 3-2 timing now it's going to kick in and the question Arbiters. is is how much yeah how much energy is available now oh man gypsy doesn't have any MP because all those arbors oh. are nice storms and there's no support for these tanks that was a huge overextension. All of his units were out of position. Tanks get caught. Now Zealots are going to try and jump on top of them. Supplies are still high for both players, but this is going to be a huge loss of tanks. Yeah, Gypsy might be able to barely win this fight, but barely winning a fight is not one you want to do when you have 3-2 Terran. Losing all these tanks. Arbiter's in the air. Like, 
He has no anti air. <laughs> the arbiters are gonna rack up <laughs> damage on these tanks. Look at that, see ya tank! There's not a single Goliath in the army. Now, luckily for Gypsy here, Dragon's not going to push across the map. He's content with just killing these two tanks just surrounding them. But that buys time for Gypsy to lay these mines, set up a command center at bottom oh, right. Oh, that's a mo he's move commanding his tanks. He's gonna lose another tank in the center of the map. I think Gypsy is kind of just flustered here. He's feeling obligated to try and defend everywhere, but he just doesn't have the critical mass tanks anymore. Yeah, I feel like Gypsy uh, tried to save those tanks instead of trying to set up shop uh, back at his bases, trying to get some turret minefields up. But this is just not enough tanks here. Like Dragon is able to ignore one tank shot. He's finally killing some Arbiters, which is good. Yeah, As you can but... see, he just has no tanks. Yeah, if there was more tanks, he for sure could have cleaned this army up. But Dragon is going to barrel through. And look at Supply, it's a max Protoss army versus a Terran that's struggling at 140. He's got like 11 factories too, so that's probably 20 Supply locked up in the factory. So really out in the map right now, it's probably max versus just 110. Dragon flooding into the fourth base. He's gonna catch this army on the left side. Zealot almost gets dragged into the mine. That could have been huge. And again, this command center is likely to fall. Yeah, Gypsy is going to lose two bases here, and I think he just overextended himself, was too aggressive with his army once he lost that big fight with the tanks getting stormed. Yeah, he was just a little bit too aggro, as you said, a little over eager trying to take down the fourth base or get in position to cut off the fourth base, fifth and sixth base, and he gets punished in an instant. And now, Dragon, he's going to be feeling really damn good. He's on six bases. He's got like 20 gateways. He's denied the fourth base. And Gypsy's probably basically mined out, right? Like, he's only got his third base running right now. Yeah, he can probably set up and take this fourth base. But then it's going to be really, really hard for him to move out. And another command center goes down. That army from uh, Gypsy is looking a little bit healthier now, but the tank count is still... I think in the single digits. Yeah, it's not that many tanks. And you know, Gypsy's feeling bad about one obviously losing the command center bottom right. But when you know that Protoss is out of position with that many units, like you're sacking a base for that, or the, you're sacking a base to get them all out of position, and then you can't do anything about it, like you can't punish them, you can't kill a base yourself, oh, it hurts. Because now Gypsy is just obligated to sit here rebuild that tank count and we saw a probe actually go to bottom right so that's gonna be taken from drag or taken by dragon in just a moment and it's dragon has complete map control now, so he can do whatever he wants uh and gypsy is gonna be a while before he can put excuse me <clears throat> it's gonna be a while before gypsy can do anything other than just defend and slowly expand like i think his best option here is just to uh, try to go for some kind of split map and hope the game goes on long enough. Yeah, that's your only option is to just camp it out. If we look at how many bases are on the map, there is, what, 14? So that's quite a lot. Like, Dragon, if he did just sit there and this game did go split map, I mean, he would have a lot of a lot of resources available. I'm, I'm hoping that Dragon behind this, while he's max, is upgrading like air in case he ends up going into carriers. But he's not. So here comes Dragon. He's got three Arbiters. There's the first EMP. That was great. He hits both Arbiters, I think. No, that one has full energy. That's a great stasis. But look at Dragon attacking up the ramp. All the goons are in the front. That means they're going to get... Oh, there's only one tank. I thought there were more tanks than that. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't yeah. matter. <laughs> if you don't have 15, 16, 20 tanks here, like just one stasis, you can see you got four tanks. And then another got another two, and that's it. Yeah, that is going to be all she wrote. Dragon overwhelming Gypsy at the fourth base. And unfortunately, our Canadian Terran is going to be moving into the loser's bracket. But our Canadian Protoss is going to be moving into the winner's bracket. He played very nicely there. And Gypsy just a little over eager. Like, everything was going fine until that point. Yeah, other than uh, his upgrades, uh, it looked really, really good for Gypsy at a, well, one certain point where Dragon sacrificed all that army, and it just, his push wasn't coordinated well. He had, like, some tank siege in the back, and then 
he just didn't have anything supporting his tanks there all the way at the front. Yeah, sometimes I get <clears throat> my tanks hot keyed wrong and like I siege and then like they're actually a screen away and I don't know what the heck happened, but they're just all sitting there. And you saw it, he had seven tanks sieged up, <laughs> not with army. So it happens and uh, Gypsy looked good. Dragon looked a little bit better though. So he's going to be uh, in the winner's bracket and winner's bracket is going to be best of three this time around, right? So it's not going to be best of one format like we saw last season where it's quite ruthless you could potentially play two games and just be out uh, that's not gonna be the case but it is not gonna be all best of threes it is gonna be best of one the first two series and best of three for the rest of them so uh gypsy if he does make it into the losers bracket will have a shot at redemption but now we're going to be going into attack versus ziggy that's going to be a terran versus zerg are we going to be going into a break or are we going to go into the game Okay, we're going to be going to the game in just a couple minutes, guys. Now, Patak versus Ziggy. What are your thoughts on this matchup? Uh, Ziggy likes to go mech. 99% <laughs> of the it? time, he's going to go mech. So it's up to Patak, I think. Like, Ziggy is not one to change his play style. So I don't know what Patak does against mech. I know what he does against Bio. He does not play standard. Uh, and, I mean... Favored? I don't know who's favored. I think it's going to be an interesting match, though. Well, when I played Ziggy, Ziggy Terran, Terran versus, versus Terran, Terran, he's pretty good with that. And he's quite aggressive in the sense that he recognizes that TVT is about positioning. So he will punish you if you're out of position. Uh, yeah, it's going to be very hard to overwhelm uh, his good positioning and minds, uh, mind setup everywhere. Now, Patak, I've only seen him play... Twice. I saw him play versus Raz in some type of show match. And then I saw Gypsy versus Patak just recently in the EU versus in a continental battle. And Gypsy did play Bio, so not too sure. I also am not too sure how Patak reacts versus Mech. But Patak did go for that Soma opener that we saw in ASL where he tried to take three bases real fast going to Ultras. So I guess that could be an option since our first map is going to be Revolver, right? Yeah, and that, that was the map that Soma ended up playing that style. So we may actually see that again. Now we're getting a look at the profile for both of these players. You can see that Ziggy has played in BSL pretty consistently. Never making it into the round of 16 though. So he's looking to have a change of pace. Meanwhile, Patak, he played in season 12, but again, just kind of dropped out in the round of 24, but he's done pretty darn well in Gosu League. And both players don't have a lot of games played, so I think you don't really need to think too much about the statistics. Yeah. But you can see Patak is 100% versus Terran. <laughs> From what I remember, Ziggy's favorite matchup is actually Terran versus Terran. One of the few players I would say that favors the, the mirror matchup. But he seems pretty strong in that matchup. And then in TVZ, it's always mech. And in TVP, it's always two fact. <laughs> two fact. Okay. Well, <laughs> he makes it out of. Uh, if he makes it out versus Patak, we might get to see some two fact action uh, versus Dragon. Now, Patak, what is he wearing, man? Are those his WCG medals? <laughs> because for those of you that don't know, Patak was a very good old school European player. He was from Croatia, as you can see, and he made it to WCG multiple years. So that might have been, or those might be, I mean, his cold medals from WCG. <laughs> now, now Ziggy, on the other hand, he plays both StarCraft 2 and StarCraft 1. I don't know if he played in any WCGs, but uh, he's, he's a very strong player. I love Patak's picture. Who else had a picture like this, man? Was it Castro? He had some epic photo with the like sunglasses and stuff, shades. I can't remember exactly. Yeah, Rip Rip Castro, one of the one of the legends of the South American scene. Uh, another Zerk player too. So Castro's dearly missed because he was a consistent BSL player. And we're getting a look. Oh, we are ready. So. We're going to get into game two, guys. It's going to be Ziggy versus Patak, a Terran versus Zerg on Revolver.
So in the top left, our Terran player, it is Mr. Ziggy. And then of course, in the top right, our Zerg player, a very strong old school Zerg. It is Patak, also representing Soul Clan. I was not aware of that. Yeah, Soul has several European players now, Gornich, uh, Bonneth, Patak. A lot of Korean players too. They also have, I think, Babo. Another very strong South American, South American Bobble, Zerg. Dandy as well, Ultra. So I mean, a very stacked. Yeah, team. they got tons of them. Now, I guess I have to say, all eyes are on the opener for Patak because if he's copying that three hatch build from Soma, he must be a fan of Soma. And so Soma's been innovating the Zerg versus Terran meta, whether it's a nine pool, ten pool, ten hatch, eleven hatch, all types of shenanigans. And we do see this could be a nine pull. So we'll see yep. if this is going, yep, it is going to be a nine pull from Patak. And versus someone that likes mech, this is going to be a good opener. Yeah, now Ziggy, like I said, 99% of the times I've seen him play Ziggy, he's gone mech. And is it going to be nine pull speed or is it actually just going to be gas cancel? And it is just a gas cancel. So this is a little bit more standard. He's just going to use the extra drone to mine and he can go out and scout now. He's gonna find Ziggy right away, and Ziggy, there's the barracks. Uh, yep, it's gonna there's... be key. Oh, well, there's the gas. So it is gonna be some kind of a tech opener. Yep, tech opener from Ziggy. Now, even though mech is not meta these days, we did see Light pull it out in the ASL versus, was it Hero? I think it was yeah. versus Hero, and it looked quite deadly. He ended up going for a two armory opener. I'm sure Ziggy has watched that match, so that'll be something to look for, whether he's going to go for the two armory opener or just play the typical one armory potential timing attack. And Patak, I do like the scout. He does come in and confirm that it is a gas opener. Unfortunately, he's going to get eBay block, though. Yeah, this is very annoying. And this should buy Ziggy maybe like three seconds while the links are occupied with the eBay. But there, he sees the links. He's going to panic now. He's going to, oh, crap, here they come. He's got to cancel that eBay. Does he get to cancel? I don't know. But the factory's going to go down now. And of course, the factory's not going to be in time to help out with these links. He's going to have to block with SCVs, uh, most likely three, and then just rely on the Marines. And this is actually eight links, not six. Yeah, and I am, well, you were saying that <laughs> Ziggy liked two fact. And Ziggy's still mining on gas. Okay, he pulled off of now. I uh, pulled off now. I thought we were actually going to see another uh, a two-fact opener versus Patak here, but, but he's now managed to pull off. That's a bunker, and mm, it doesn't yeah, cover the top side. So it's we'll see if Patak can actually get any damage done. Yeah, interesting choice going for the bunker instead of just uh, blocking the ramp. Maybe he feels uh, this is safer. And he can keep all his SCVs mining. And it looks like it's a well positioned enough that uh, Patek hasn't actually been able to do anything with uh, these Zerglings. Yeah, not able to find really any success. Okay, now he finds some success. He jumps on one of the Marines, but doesn't actually take it down. Now, behind this, I didn't actually get to see what Patek is. Okay. What? There's no third hatch. Okay, there's the lair. Is it? Did he get speed first? Maybe he got speed first. But I was expecting to see a little bit more than this. Uh, the, actually, the vulture might act, get into the natural before the sunken's done. This will be quite annoying. Oh no, sunken's gonna complete. Gotta be careful. Oh, he's on a ramp. Oh! oh! Almost caught it, but in the end, vulture does get away. <laughs> now I. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, still no add-on from uh, Ziggy, so it's not going to be any kind of Vulture play. Just going to go straight into Goliaths here. And this Vulture might actually die. He's got to be careful. Got to be on top of the Vulture at all times. Yeah, definitely don't want to let the Vulture sneak in, get some damage done. And for now, Ziggy's Vulture is just going to kind of hang around and make sure nothing crazy. Okay, without oh, Vulture, unfortunately. <laughs> I think that's a terrain 
issue yeah. right there because again you can see it that vulture right there wanted to go forward but i think ziggy caught it before that happened now behind this this does look like it's going to be just typical mutas and we do see that second factory is done armory is about to, or second factory is about to be done armory is about to be done so everything looks just like a normal potential five fat goliath timing yeah Armory, second fact on the way, and going towards the net. There's a third hatchery from the tech and the spire. So, I mean, it's just a standard game. Oh, it looks like another vulture gets trapped by uh, Speedlings this time. So, nice pick off there from, uh, from our Zerg player. And now, this is the point in the game where Ziggy has to be careful. He could die to a Link Flood at any time when you open mech like this. So it's good for him to make this bunker. He's gonna take advantage that he still has his three uh, Marines left over. Yeah, he needs the bunker. Cause like you said, if there were Lings coming, he would instantly lose three Marines and a Goliath. Well, Lings don't care about that. They would easily shut that down. I have to say that Patak's third hatch timing is a bit late. So he's kind of, well, not kind of, he's extremely low on larva. And you can see that his supply is pretty low too for the six and a half minute mark to be at only 25 supply that means that his drone count is not that high either so he may be okay in the early game but i'm worried for him going into the mid game that he's just not going to have the larva not have the econ to stand up versus mech because versus mech you just need a lot of stuff it doesn't necessarily matter what it is whether it's mutas whether it's ling muta whether it's hydras if you just have a lot of it you'll shut it down so i'm a bit worried for attack in that sense yeah it looks like he's gonna take that fourth uh hatchery out of third base get that third gas very important for zerg to have three gas against mech right away and it's interesting that uh yeah his drone count does seem a little bit low you want at least one per patch at your natural and main uh before you make mutas and of course you want that third hatch to finish uh, a little bit before your spire so you can start making a lot of minus right away looks like he only has six not enough to one shot this scv so i'm not very efficient here is he gonna manage okay he gets one only taking turret fire but that's two very low mutas already yeah i love the turret or the turret and ebay positioning it made it so hard for patak to get any damage done and there's that third base going up as you mentioned now ziggy i think is still on two factories he may be on three but he's got up a, a lot of Goliaths. Like, he's got seven or eight Goliaths when Patak just gets across the map. That's that's phenomenal. So he's going into the mid game in a good position. We see that a drone round was built for Patak. That's great for him. He's managed to be pretty much even in supply. So maybe his econ wasn't as low as I thought. There we go. Another drone cycle. But he doesn't have that much defense, really. It's just one sunken in six mutas or so. Yeah, so we see Patak actually making more Sunkins, and this is not something you normally do against Mech. Usually you just have enough Mutas here to defend the first push, uh, but it looks like he's already transitioning, and he has a Queen's Nest. Now this, I do not understand. Queen's Nest, he could be going into Defilers, could be going into Ultras, but there's no upgrades, so it would be surprising to see Ultras. I imagine this has got to be Defilers, but it... well. I forgot, this is a mech opener, so he could be getting the Queen's Nest for just building the Queens, building up that energy. Now, Triple Sunken being set up at bottom right, this is going to be a good timing for Patak. He's going to get these Sunkens up just in time, and Ziggy's going to start feeling the pressure because it's going to be three base Zerg. Yeah, we have a uh, Starport and the Science Facility, so this is going to be upgrade and not timing, which makes it actually a little bit worse for Patak to get all these sunken stuff. Like this is a lot of, uh, he's investing. He does have a third, but like you can see, he only made seven mutas. He didn't make any more. So not a huge investment into the mutas and he's just droning up uh, for now. Another drone round and four sunkens. He's making sure that no Goliaths can kill any of his bases. Meanwhile, Ziggy did not go into that five pack timing that I thought we may see. Instead, he is going into the fast second upgrade trying to get that plus two weapon which is just as critical in terran versus zerg as it is in terran versus protoss now he did still ziggy, hasn't built a command center did ziggy go for a plus arc okay so oh. he went for plus one armor and usually when you Whoa. go plus one armor that will indicate a timing because the plus one armor is just better against hydras and muta early game but 
plus two weapons is a lot better than plus two armor when you go this kind of style where you don't really attack you just keep some pressure so zerg doesn't keep making drones and we actually do see queens and a lot of sunkens well here comes goliath but remember there's eggs right there so yeah, you, gotta, I don't know. you gotta kill those eggs and yeah. Goliaths only do one or two damage so it's gonna be a while and it was actually queen so it, it makes a little bit more sense here uh that he went for that queen's nest he does have an evolution chamber i expect that through hydra uh attack upgrade but i don't yeah, even see a hydrogen yeah i don't see a hydrogen either so i'm curious what the upgrade is actually going to be now plus one armor as you mentioned is strong with timings and that was the reason that we saw flash doing that five fact timing a long time ago but as it got more and more figured out Terran players ended up going plus one weapon regardless if they're going to go for a timing or not because if you get into this situation where you can't attack with plus one armor anyways well now you're not able to hit that plus two power spike so now ziggy's kind of in an awkward position where he's just going to be i don't want to say down in upgrades but he's not going to have plus three incredibly fast but actually that plus one weapon timing is not too bad now it seems to have kicked in and he is going to start taking that third base at top middle in just a moment yeah, that is even, a lot of sunkens even more sunkens going down and i like that patak actually got plus one carapace because even if he's not going to go for a lot of mutas after this he has the option and it also helps his queen stay alive a little bit longer get those brulings again zero tanks so not yeah not any uh, good targets for the brulings but it makes sense to go like in a way it makes sense to go sunken queen because you can just get rid of any tanks and the lives are pretty bad against sunken this is one of those games where oh my gosh he has one tank but i, I was gonna say this is one of those games where if artosa saw it and well if artosa saw this or artosa was playing in it and lost he just sat there <laughs> he literally just sat there he built 20 sunken and seven munas and then he built seven queens and look at this he just one shot at my tank <laughs> That's exactly what he would say. <laughs> All right, so the tank gets one uh, tank shell off, and we are raiding a queen. It's going to die. It almost had enough energy for another building, and it looks like Ziggy is just going to keep expanding. I'm yeah, surprised I mean... he just doesn't make more tanks. Well, he only has one add-on. <laughs> and if you look at his gas, he's kind of... Okay, he does have double add-on. He's kind of gas-starved. When you do go for the fast upgrades, Terran versus Zerg, you do have to get your nat gas pretty quickly. And, of course, Vessels and Irradiate also take up a lot of gas, too. And, and he's building Goliaths nonstop, so uh, it's not surprising that he doesn't have that many tanks. But, okay, we're going to have an engagement in the center of another drone. It's like, okay, Patak, I think he's a little bit ambitious here. But, again, this is going to be another attempted siege at the Sunskin. But queens are just easily going to pick off these tanks. Look how many are there. Yeah. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> I like the strategy, but the drone count, it's got to go. Okay, it looks like he actually did drone up a lot. And if he can saturate this fourth base even a little bit, he will have a lot of production. Uh, and he should be able to kill ziggy if he kills enough tanks but Ziggy has a large army and it's going to be wall upgrade pretty soon it's going to be two one goliaths yeah and even though he's not going to have the super strong plus two or plus or super fast plus three power spike i mean armor is great too because all the well, tanks and goliaths start with plus one armor so if you're up in armor upgrades versus weapon upgrades all of a sudden your units just don't die unless they get brutalinged by tank now this is an ambitious base to take but he's going to take the base right next to patak's main i kind of like this because it forces all the engagements to be at the top side and that means you just have to defend one position again more tanks getting set up but again these tanks aren't actually able to do anything like they can shoot a few times but once they're spotted uh just uh a queen will just come and snipe it away and we do see that Ziggy is just setting up tanks and setting up turrets and more Goliaths. And we're going to go into a scenario where this could actually just be split map. 4 or 5 base versus 4 or 5 base. Queens have done an amazing job. I mean, they just come in and get free kills. And 
Well, you, you play all the races. I know that. When you see queens like this, what's your go-to counter? Like, do you build vessels? Okay, normally, yeah, vessels are actually very strong against me, but normally you go for a timing before the queens are complete with 150 energy, but this is just uh, a strange way that attack uh, went into queens where you made a lot of sunkens. And I mean, I think Ziggy's doing the right thing. He's doing the right thing here where he's just expanding. Like, you don't really need to attack here. Zerg on four bases. The only thing I would see change is maybe get a drop top bottom, uh, bottom right with some vultures but he's doing the right thing just expanding zerg is very defensive with these queens and sunkens um there will be a point where it's a little bit concerning if you don't have any tanks but for now look that's another dead tank for now he just has enough goliaths to keep the hydras off yeah i'm just waiting for patak to just have like some big swell of hydras come out of the bottom side of the map because he's got five hatches there he's got four macro or three macro hatches and then the nat and main hatch so he's got potential to just have an overwhelming amount of units just flood from that direction there's no nidus there though so he can't actually sync up the top side of his army with the bottom side so that could come back to haunt him but we see supplies have all of a sudden shot up for patak now it's 130 to 160 and hydras are setting up like they want to go for a flank potentially all right and we do have plus two on the hydras some random drones here and the mech i think is at two one currently yeah two one so he actually did get weapons first somehow uh the hydras will be doing a good job against just uh goliath vultures but again look at the number of goliaths he has there but if these hydra groups can sync up and if he can brutally these uh tanks there at the front it can be a little bit scary for ziggy especially with the way he positioned his fourth base so close to the Zerg. Yeah, he's got to now be careful of the attacks onto the bottom side, left side of the map, especially mid-left, that Zerg can do with all those hatcheries. And he's got to manage his defense at the top side too. Now, Patak really just hasn't found any way to even get outside of his base. Like, he can come down his ramp and that's it. He can't even go to the top side. The bridge is so tiny that tanks will just shell it. There's also mines set up. There's turrets set up. He's going to trade so ineffectively here. Oh, well, okay, here he comes. He's going to try and knock this base down. He may be able to take down these three tanks because that's just all there is. But he's going to lose all of these hydras. I don't even think he's going to get this command center. Here oh, here comes the Yep, queens are coming in. Goodbye, tanks. But you can see that these Goliaths are just so strong and the Hydra count just isn't that high that the Goliaths clean everything up. Right, he is getting some damage here. Yeah. He got a vessel there. He got an, a few tanks, some SCVs. So the thing is, attack. look at the bottom side of that. Look how many Hydras and Queens are moving out. Ziggy is overextended here. Like, taking that fourth ba base now makes him uh, very open to this kind of play, like where he can get counterattacked at a different location of the map. He's gonna have to float that right away. Not even utilizing the Queens, and this is like 30 Hydras here. Some drones to support as well. And... Yeah, it... <laughs> yeah I mean... that's, that, that's what I was worried about, is that counterattack to the mid-left. All right, so now Ziggy's in a position where he can secure a fourth base, but a fifth is gonna be very hard. Because if, say, he had just taken his third and then expanded vertically down it would be a lot easier to defend that way than it is like this yeah that is true and you can see exactly why that was probably the more ideal base to take and another drone cycle from patak but all of these hydras are now out of position and Ziggy's going to pound. Well, okay, that's still a lot of Hydras. They're going to get on top of the tanks at the bottom side. He takes down one of them, but high ground Goliaths are going to save the day. And what looked like could have been an okay fight for Patak all of a sudden just got obliterated. But supplies are still okay. It's 140 to 115. And Patak does have that fifth base going up at Look bottom right. Look at the right. fourth. Another... Like, this is just, he attacks one location, then he attacks the other. Yeah. He can't be at both bases at once. And behind this, he's just droning up. And you see the Hydras with the Queen support is actually very efficient against uh, Mech. But I haven't seen Brulings go off in about two minutes. Like, that fight where the Hydras lost, if they had just three Queens, they would have won that pretty decisively, I think. 
Yeah, I'm waiting for Nidus to kind of just kick in where Patak can get all of his units into one spot instantly. But no Nidus just yet. He's content with just having these not small, but not exactly the biggest backstabs. And I think he's going to shut down mid-left again. That's a lot of queens. He could pop almost every single tank here. Oh, he's going to infest the command center. There it is. Goodbye tanks also. Yeah, very nice queen usage there. And even though he's going to lose his hydras, the command center is useless. And he's going to be... He's going to kill a few more tanks. And you see... Oh, a queen died as the brutaling animation went off. Of course, if that happens, the brutaling actually doesn't work. Even if you already sent it out, and it just doesn't... It hits, but it doesn't kill. And, I mean, things are just falling apart here for Ziggy. He can't defend both locations. The queens are extremely efficient. And another counterattack here at the fourth base. And this is just a game where I think Ziggy made it harder for himself by taking this fourth base. Like, uh... There's no way for him to take a fifth. It was either just stay on four and then pressure, but taking a fifth and going for some kind of split map, just not a viable option when you expand this way. Damn, these attacks from Patak are doing so much damage. I thought that Patak it had just taken too much time to ramp up his eco and ramp up his macro, but not the case. He's going to, well, deny mid left again. And if we look at what Ziggy's econ is, he's lost so many SCVs to top right that even though he's mining on two bases, I mean, he doesn't even have full saturation at either of the bases. His mains mined out, his nats basically mined out. Patak probably has more drones even, and Patak is up 50 supply too. So Patak crushing it right now. That was a big hit though. Yeah, Patak actually expanded. Behind all this pressure, he expanded at uh, mid, bottom, and bottom left as well. And basically, all he has to do is keep attacking, keep making queens. That's a lot of Jones at the natural on one patch. Tanks are well upgraded, though. We do have finally 3-2, and the Hydras are well upgraded as well. But the, the key here is the queens. Like, the queens don't care about upgrades. They just yeah. one-shot everything. And if you have enough queens with Hydra support, it's just very, very hard for Terran to do anything. And if Ziggy can stabilize here, Maybe there's a shot, but I mean, Patak just has a huge uh, army advantage at this time. Well, I like how Patak's taking bottom left because that just says to Terran like, well, okay, I know you're just gonna play defensive, but if you just sit there, I'm gonna have to take all the money on your side of the map. So you better do something about it. Otherwise I'm gonna get all those resources. And that means MP, that Ziggy- MP. Can't, yeah, yeah, if he lands MP, MP here, <laughs> ooh. No, oh, he it just probably doesn't it. have it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like you said, that putting a ton of pressure on Ziggy indirectly. Like, Ziggy, even if he mines the bases he currently has, he will need more if this game goes on even longer. And we do have a small army uh, here in the middle map. He's trying to make depots to wall off, but not completely. It's only two tanks, mostly turrets. Queens are going to cut off any reinforcing tanks. So, I mean, well played by Patak. Hydra just breaking through again at this top uh, right base. Yeah, great control on the Hydras and the Queens. Love how they're sitting over the ledge and now they're gonna pop three or four tanks. There's one, pop, pop, pop. All, well, almost all the tanks go down, three out of the five. And there goes that command center. And now again, Ziggy's gonna be reset down to two bases and these tanks are out of position. So he's gonna get onto the third base now. Yeah, and the Hydra upgrades are matching the Terran upgrades as well. I mean, just great play with the Hydra movement and the green usage from Patak. And even if these Hydras die, like, Patak has so much uh, mining. He has four, five healthy bases. And Ziggy is only on two, and again, the tank count is very low. Yeah, just running out of steam for Ziggy. And Patak just has so many bases. Queens are just non-stop picking off tanks left and right that broodling okay it's not gonna take down that tank i don't think but that's a big reinforcement moving into the left or into mid left tanks are being again popped by the queens and i think this is probably gonna be the last stand from ziggy he just doesn't have anything he's being doubled in supply patak starting to take the left side of the map and what looked like a great opener patak just brings it back with solid macro
Yeah, I was questioning the opening build, but it actually worked wonders against what Ziggy did. And then it took him a while to actually break out. But once he did, like you could see how hard it was for Ziggy to defend both uh, the top right base and the mid left base. Like with Mech, you don't have that kind of movement in your army where you can be two bases at once. And Ziggy needed to either invest a lot more top right or just, I mean, push across that path and not try to take another base because it's basically impossible to defend both. Yeah, and as you mentioned, like the tank count was just so low in the beginning. I was expecting to see like a three or four tank push at any point, and it just never, never happened. It was just one. He had mask allies, but they couldn't attack anywhere. So I think it was just a misread there from Ziggy, but the opener was great. And I think if they get a rematch, it could be a little bit different, but attack he does take game one and unfortunately for ziggy that's all that matters is who wins game one because patak's gonna be moving into the winner's bracket that means we're gonna have a dragon versus patak winner's match a protoss versus zerg but before we go into that we're gonna go into a quick break and we'll be back in just a couple of minutes
Welcome back, guys. We're going to be going into the winner's match. It's going to be Patak versus Dragon. It's going to be an EU versus NA showdown here. We already saw Patak take down Ziggy with some great play versus the mech. But Dragon, no slouch, played very well versus Gypsy, sending him down to the loser's match. And what's our map for the winner's match, Zero? Oh, it's going to be good night. So you're talking about how Revolver... That's a free win for Protoss. What about Good Night, PBZ? I think it's a little bit balanced. Maybe slightly Zerg, but not nothing significant. All right, well, we'll see what Dragon has planned because we know Dragon, he will nail his build, and he has a whole bunch of builds. Generally, he'll go for that Zealot timing, but we saw a couple seasons ago versus Eon Zerg, he had that nice Zealot Ar double Archon timing. He's got all types of builds <clears> planned. <throat> Meanwhile... The one game I did see of Patak versus Raz, honestly, it was Sunken Man again. And then he went into mass Zerglings with heavy upgrades. And that can be a very strong style, but I don't know if you're going to get to that versus someone like Dragon, who always goes for really slick timings, has really, really powerful timings too. So I think it's going to be a bit hard for Patak, but Good Night is going to be our first map. Are, do we have the players ready, Zero? Yeah, so Dragon, in this matchup, he's particularly strong with his timing attacks, whether that's the 1-0 or... Well, it's no longer the 2-0 timing because Protoss gets one armor, but the 1-1 one, one, uh, timing with uh, Mass Jagoon and Storm, like Dragon and is no slouch in this matchup at all, but he's particularly strong in the first 12 minutes of the game and he'll usually build a lead just from hitting his timing so patak whatever he does i hope he planned it out well because he's gonna yeah. face a lot of pressure from dragon yeah i don't know if i've ever seen a game from dragon where he blatantly missed the build like he just doesn't miss it he's one of those people that if he streamed which i'm unaware if he's unaware of him streaming anywhere but if he streamed that's the guy that you want to copy because he doesn't have 500 APM. He's got like 200 APM, but he nails it every single time. You can count on him every time you watch him play to nail whatever build he has uh, practiced for that particular matchup. And I know Dragon practices for particular matchups because when I was playing in VSL, I check his match history. And if we had 10 different maps, he would play versus Terror like 10 games in a row, one or tw once or twice on each map to get a feel for it. So with that said, guys, I think our players are ready, right, Zero? Let's get into Dragon versus Patak. Our game or our map is going to be on Good Night. Okay, guys, in the top left, our blue Zerg representing Soul Clan. It is Patak. And then in the bottom right, representing Canada and all of NA, our Protoss hero, it is Dragon. Now, lately, I've been seeing cannon expands from Protoss, and I found that surprising because many last season kind of innovated that fast cybernetics play. Is there a reason that we're seeing more, I'll say, passive openers from Protoss? So a couple of things. One, uh, when a build or an opener becomes extremely popular, Zerg will always adapt and make that opener slightly less weak or slightly more weak. It happened against 111, and it's also going to happen against uh, Gateway Expand. And if it's a four player map, there's a one a third chance that your opponent is crossed and on four player maps Zergs are likely going to go hatchery first and if you went gateway against hatchery cross map it's just not a ideal scenario dragon with all that being said is not uh someone who goes for gateway expand against zerg on any map basically like if you see dragon maybe it's like seven to three that he'll go forge and it's just something that leads to uh, a more stable game where he can hit his timings a lot easier and here we have overpour against what looks like to be 
uh, Forgex fan, we don't see. Uh, we saw the probe uh, move out right away. And now I have seen some players go for 11 Nexus, so that still could be an option. But yeah, Dragon, I, I agree. I don't think I've seen him gateway expand very often, if ever. Forge expand, I mean, kind of nothing really ever goes wrong. You can just hit your build almost every single time. And there is the Forge. Now, some subtle thing that I always look at is some people put like one gap between the forge and the pylon. Some people put two between the forge and the pylon. There's no gap between the forge and the pylon. Is there any reason for that? Uh, let's see. Not really sure why I did it this way. The pylon could also be more to the right, and it would allow him an even split of cannons against the hydro bus. You want the like you could have two cannons on the left of the pylon. Uh, or the left of the pylon and two on the right. This way, he can only make cannons on the right and then a one on the left. So maybe he planned it out and he thought this is the best wall. It's gonna be good against links. Is this actually six links with I overpool? Think. Okay, so this is not great for protect because this is overpool. Dragon is gonna be able to go Nexus. Okay, no, it's Ooh. not six links, just two, maybe four. Yeah, so this is not bad. Yeah, so against Overpool, you just go Nexus first, and especially since it's cross map, you can go Nexus Cannon and you'll be perfectly fine. And it's going to be a two gap wall, which is nice uh, for Protoss, and you only have to block one location. Yeah, we see that Dragon has kept his probe alive. This is something Dragon does well every time you watch him play. I, I think I remember games of him even having the probe alive for upwards of five minutes. So. He's going to be able to scout everything. And again, guys, thank you so much for supporting the BSL. Not only not only watching, but of course, donating, becoming Patreon supporters too. I've been seeing a couple of donations coming in. Uh, thank you so much for that. And we do see that, again, Protoss sees everything. And Patak, that is a third hatchet top middle, correct? Yep. So you also played Zerg. Uh, what is this indicative of? Is this just going to be typical lair? Can he go hatch or hydra den after this, I mean? Well, because the probe is still alive, you'd want to kill it if you're going to go hydra or... Okay, so it's just going to be lair. But usually you want to kill that probe or not allow it to get in and then go hydras. But the third gas is not a huge deal in this matchup because uh, by the time you need a third gas normally, you're already taking that fourth base. So not hugely indicative of anything, but... Uh, it's nice to have that third gas. It gives you a little bit more flexibility if you can take it right away. We see that the Nexus is up and running for Protoss. And again, that probe, even though it was dangerously low, still alive, still getting the intel that Protoss desperately needs versus the Zerg player. Forge has not started spinning just yet. It's a little bit too fast for that. But I expect to see it start spinning around the 430 mark try and go into that about seven minutes 715 timing that we know dragon likes to go for now meanwhile that is a somewhat quick gas at the natural and stargate follow-up okay so this from dragon is gonna be probably just one one if we see that forge spin right away once he hits that 100 gas like it's it's streamlining uh one one when you get the second gas right after the stargate we're at the same time and no one plus one quite yet. Could also be Citadel. Dragon putting on some pressure with his first Zalot just so Patak makes some additional Zerglings. And he's scouting the third. Like, the probe is still alive. It's probably going to actually go home. Speed is about to finish on these Zerglings. And if you could keep your probe alive till you see speed, uh, you've done a good job. And there's a Zergling speed. Yeah, so everything does just look very normal. But I have to point out that Patak has been supply blocked for quite a long time. So that's a lot of drones that were not able to be built. I mean, he's still supply block, man. I'm so worried that Patak is going to be underdeveloped in his econ when Dragon moves out, that he's going to have a tough time recovering going into the mid game. The Overlord came in for a peek and sees that this is a Stargate opener. Doesn't get to catch the Citadel timing, though. We see that this is a 520 Citadel, and this is pretty much just going to be a typical Zealot pressure build. Nothing really too unusual going on. Yeah, and uh, like you said, Patak's 27, 27 supply block is actually pretty painful. 
Like every delay here is going to make it harder for him to defend the the zealot push. And again, dragon, that's not something you wanna you wanna do. I think what he did there, because you normally make that third overlord at 23, but he was so occupied with that probe that he just it just slipped his mind for a second and he missed it. And here comes that first Corsair, gonna confirm Spire timing and everything. Gonna see it and then probably run away. No time to kill an overlord here. Would be a little bit risky to do so. Sees the Hydra then, sees the second gas. So he knows what he's up against. Just standard five hatch Hydra, no Muta right away. And Giant is just powering up for that 1-1 one, one timing. I didn't see if he actually did get plus one air though. I also didn't get a catch of that. Okay, he is getting plus one air. And we do see first cannon is going up in the main of Dragon. Now, seeing the second gas to me means you got to be a little bit weary that it could be Muta's. We saw, oh, he lost one of the Sairs in the center of the map. Nicely done by Patak there. Uh, but Dragon is building up that Zealot count, and we are approaching that 7.15 minute mark, which is generally the time Protoss starts moving out on the map. All right, Archives right away, second gat, a cannon here. This is just so when he moves out, he has less fear of a link counterattack. And we actually do see creeps. Normally, you just defend with Hydras. The fact that he's making creeps makes me feel like he's going to go for something else. Third gas as well here. And... I mean, this is this is not looking standard from Protect. There's a second and is that the third gateway? Oh, okay. Yeah, second and third okay. gateway. This is pretty much what you do as Protoss. You go up into the four, three, four gate count at around the seven minute mark. By then, you've already got all your probes built. You don't necessarily need to build more. And at the same time, you're moving out, so you're putting out a lot of pressure while also getting ready to go into your second swell of units. Now. I like that positioning with the sunken behind the hatchery and also having a couple mutas here will really help support the sunken so I don't expect a lot of damage to get done here. Okay, so Dragon sees the mutas. Now this is huge. What he needs to do here is just keep his Corsair count going up but he hasn't confirmed that this is actually just a huge muta opener. Uh, what would give it away is this third gas because even when you open for mutas, you're just following up with Hydra, so you don't need that dirt gas. But having three gases this early, this is a heavy investment into mutas. Dragon is not aware of that yet. He has to be a little bit careful. He could get uh, caught off guard with like a control group of mutalists and like 20 Scourge, which looks like Patak is building up towards that. But Dragon does have some time here. Like He's still building up his gateway count. I don't think we'll see an Archon, but oh, looks like we are actually going to see an Archon here. Yeah, and the Archon is going to help out immensely. That's if the Archon can actually get onto the Mutas, of course. I'm looking at the Sim City, and I'm thinking, wow, it's going to be hard to get through those probes. It's going to be hard to get through that block of buildings to actually get a hit onto the Mutas. But maybe he'll be able to find some success. Meanwhile, 6th Hatch going up for Patak. Patak's supply is relatively high relative to... To Protoss's supply at 75 to 90, so Attack has actually done a good job to start or to rebuild his drones after that critical 20, 27 supply block. Now, here come those Zealots again. That is not enough Sayers, right? It's only six. It's not enough. He has an Archon. The Archon can uh, hit the Mutas and the... Okay, Dragon should retreat here. He should realize he doesn't have enough here, but he's actually going to commit with only one Archon here. Seems a little bit risky. The Sim City will help. But again, not a ton of mutas. I think it's only eight. Yeah, he's got to be Here careful. Now, Patak needs to focus down that Archon if he can. The Scourge do connect onto some of the Sayers, but a couple are left over. And of course, that Archon is still alive. But yeah, the sunken positioning was too good. So for now, Dragon is going to turn around. He's going to go into that Robo. And I mean, we are just going to transition it into, into a normal game, I think. That was... Uh, that was wonderful for Patak. He killed six Corsairs, yeah. kept all his Muta alive. The Scourge, you don't really care. Like, that's why you got that third gas. And now he's going to transition into Hydras. And Dragon invested into a lot of anti-air. So his gateway count is actually pretty low. It's only going up to six now, I think. And looks like he's even going to get these two high Templars. Yeah, he's going to catch all the Templars. They do fall, and he only loses one Mutalist. So that's fantastic. For Patak, and as you stated, going heavy into the anti-air means that those gateways 
are extremely late. A lot of times you'd be seeing Protoss pushing 100, 130 supply or so at around the 10 minute mark. But we see Dragon just down at 100 supply. So Patak, he is in an amazing position and now he's gonna be on the offensive. Yeah, Dragon is dead. Dragon is dead unless he gets a DT <laughs> out here. The DT is his only same guys. You can see he realizes a threat. He's adding more cannons going up to AK ways, but he has no splash. Like the Archon is not gonna help yeah. against the Hydras. Uh, the Zealot's trying to get the Hydras caught here while they're on the high ground and the Hydras are not. It's just buying time. It's actually doing a decent enough Whoa. job, like, Protect, not Micro in here. He's just fighting from the low ground. Like, this is a disaster for Protect. Why doesn't he retreat? Yeah. Okay. Disaster. Disaster attack is right. He was attacking from the low ground the whole time. I was wondering if he had plus one weapon, and he does now, but during the fight, he had no plus one weapon. So a big missed opportunity, but now Dragon gonna give him a bit of a gift here. He bleeds off several zealots into the Hydras for free. Okay, but I, I thought Dragon was dead, and he managed yeah. to hold off there, and he did get himself extra cannons, and now he has these two High Templar. He's going to need a couple more because this is a lot of Hydras that's going to be coming his way with six hatches. And Patak can actually take a fourth here. There's the one DT I was talking about. Like, uh, he's going to lose the gateway. Not hugely important here. Like, Dragon doesn't have to waste a storm to defend this gateway. He is going to break out now that he has High Templars. Corsairs retreating. That's about 18 Hydras, but this is a decent spread from them. Hard to storm Hydras when they're this spread out. And looks like a nice dodge there. Another yeah, nice. one there. Nicely and done from Patek. He loses those Hydras on the right side, but he did bait out all the storms. Now Hydras, Hydras are very strong. And Dragon does have plus one armor. So maybe what happened there was Dragon had plus one armor and the Hydras had no upgrades and they were on the low ground. So that was a very decisive victory for Dragon there. Well, earlier. now, yeah, Dragon now has a strong army he's up about 20 supply and because of that he's going to start taking his third base the hydras again not having the best engagement there dragon just bringing it to patak he's feeling confident at one muta look at that hero trying to take on an archon by himself archon actually has 12 kills and i think it's a lot of mutas and uh scourge and now this is a lot of hydras now dragon has to retreat regroup and He's still making Zealot High Templars. Soon we're going to see that switch into Dragoons. Dragoons do take longer to build and... Uh, he, okay, this is a little bit scary. It's going to be awkward for Protect to attack. There's one DT here also being annoying. High Templars don't have Storm quite yet. But no fourth base insight for Protect. So he's a little bit all in here. I think he's working on something like 45, 46 drones. But without a seventh hatch and a fourth base, like, if Dragon can stabilize here, this could be uh, a key moment in the game. Okay, looks like, no. Awkward to attack into this spot. Finally, oh. some lurkers. Does Drag have an observer? I know he has a robo. Okay, observatory done. He has, he has one observer, but it's not in position. Lurkers are going to set up, and all those zealots are running into the lurkers. Those were great storms, but look at the zealots. They went from full health down to, what, like, some, like maybe 50 health? Oh man, what? And oh just going God. into the third, Cannon's getting sniped. Dragon's losing everything here. Yeah, Dragon's losing everything. He just lost almost all of his Zealots to just Lurkers. The third has been breached. I think Patak has done it. He's feeling so confident. He's even morphing Lurkers outside of Dragon's base. And look at the main and natural, almost mined out. Okay, disaster for Dragon. Not sure what inclined him to commit once he saw all those lurkers getting burrowed he'd had an observer but it was all the way in the back end i mean those are just lurker spines going and eating those zealots up yeah uh, just how do you break out of this now he hasn't built goons the entire game like he's just been focusing all of his gas into the templars that means his comp is zealot templar that's it i don't know how you just how you break an endless lurker contain this probe was secretly move to mid right but the overlord nicely done it moves into position and spots it and that hydra is going to take care of business knock him out and plus two has just finished for patak plus two armor for dragon as well but again the problem is i was saying patak is in trouble he doesn't have a fourth base but that's not going to matter if dragon can't get out and take his third 
and we see Patak is able to set up this lurker field. It's gonna be very difficult for Dragon to break out. Like the thing is, you don't want to push out with six dragoons. You want to wait until you have more. But oh, he's about to mine out, so he's uh, he's on a timer here. Yeah, he has to go right now. He doesn't want to because he's moving into the meat grinder. That's a good storm. But it's just endless Hydras. There's so many Lurkers. All the Zealots have died. He even pops the Observer. And Dragon's going to have to retreat. But he can't retreat for much longer. Look at those mineral patches. There's like 250 each. Or 200 minerals left on each of them. Okay, High Templars have energy, so they're going to pop out with one out. He's in about a minute. Dragon's gonna have like two patches left, so he just doesn't have the time to build up the dragoon count and get enough storms. He has to be. I mean, that was decent to kill a couple of lurkers, but Patak has so much more behind this. Finally, yeah, taking yeah. a four face as well. These lanes are a little bit curious because you can't really. They can't do anything. They'll they'll do what two damage to the dragoons, but they do buffer a little bit and. I mean, everything's just annoying for Dragon here. The Lurker container is moving forward as well. Well, this is the last stand for Dragon. Can he get out? He needs he a couple more storms. Point. Yeah, he it's needs like... more storm. One high Templar there. The attack is. He realizes. Okay, that's a storm, but it only hits one Hydra. Misses out on all the Lurkers, and now it's only Dragoons. And easy for Patak to just push this back in. Dragon. He's got to have, like, what, 80 minerals on these patches now? Yeah, not even. Those are about to go. One of them said 12. Those are gone. So Dragon has, like, not even a full round left of units, and that's going to be all she wrote. He's going to continue to stay in the game because he still has, you know, 800 minerals or so, but he just can't get through. There's no AoE, like you said, except for that one single storm. And there's still eight lurkers here. Oh, actually, is he going to bust it finally? It's like the Observer's going to go down and now Dragon again being forced back. And I mean, maybe if he goes right now, but it looks like the attack is just getting here in time to reinforce. It's only Dragoon Zealot now, no High Templars. With one storm, he could probably break out here, but I mean, it's looking good. The Dragoons are moving forward. He doesn't have enough money to make a Nexus, though, and the last Observer goes down. Yeah, he, he can't engage anymore. There it is. There's the GG. And Patak, he's going to take game one versus one of our strongest Protoss players in the NA scene. Yeah, that was that was a well-timed attack there just before Dragon had Dragoons. And the lurkers that were set up, Dragon just... I mean, I thought once Dragon got out on the map, it was looking good for him, but then Patak was able to set up those Lurkers right before Dragon had an Observer in place, and that switched the game in his favor. Yeah, it seemed like there were a couple trades for both sides where they kind of just threw a little bit of their units, and unfortunately, I think Dragon just had one too many poor trades in the center, and Patak capitalized. I was thinking also when you said that Patak should take a fourth base, like, yeah, he should do that because looking at that third base, how do you actually attack into it? There's storm on the high ground. There's that tiny choke. You come into the low ground, he could get storm there. But Patak, he just had another plan in mind. Those lurkers came out of nowhere and nicely done. He's going to take game one. Now, I think players pick map two, right, Zero? So this is... so. Yeah, so loser's gonna have their pick, and it, of course, Dragon's gonna get their pick, or get his pick. Now, as a Protoss player, you've seen all the maps. What do you think Dragon's gonna go for? Okay, so Aztec and a Heartbreak Ridge are no goes. Waveblade also <laughs> probably a no go. It's probably gonna be Revolver. Oh yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe Ascension, but probably Revolver. Yeah, and as I stated. When Dragon knows what the maps are going to be, he will practice on them. He's not somebody that's just like, oh, I don't know this map, it's a veto. He's gonna go experiment on it. Of course, we know that this is also in the ladder. So not a surprise here that he picks Revolver, especially since you're telling me that Protoss can't lose here. Uh, but 
you were also mentioning that Dragon likes to go Forge Expand. Is We were also mentioning that Revolver has close rush distances. Does that matter to Dragon, or is this still just going to be a Forge Expand? I think it's still going to be a Forge Expand, especially because he lost game one. Like If he were up 1-0, okay. maybe he can mix things in. But when you're, your back's against the wall, you're going to do what you're most comfortable with. And I think we're going to see Forge probably on Revolver and... Well, I'm more interested to see what Protect does because Protect played slightly unorthodox. It worked well. The Scourge got on top of those Corsairs. Like, that was the first big swing in the game when Dragon lost those six Corsairs. I mean, at that moment, Protect could have done anything. He could have made uh, Mutas, more Mutas, and then really hard for Dragon to do anything. But he made a quick Hydra transition, got two high Templars, and then on didn't coordinate his attack because he had uh, just Hydras against Zealots, but he fought on the low ground with 4 plus 1. And, I mean, it looked strong from Patek, his opener, so... Yeah, I mean, he did go into the typical 5-6 hatch Hydra that you always see, generally, after his mutas. So it wasn't anything unorthodox, really. But yeah, we, yeah, guys, we are just waiting to get into game two. Again, thank you so much for watching BSL and the donations and supporting us on Patreon. You know, you can also watch on YouTube. Uh, so definitely check us out there. I know that somebody's been making some highlights of the BSL lately and compiling like all the games, making separate videos. So definitely check them out for this season and previous seasons. And for those of you out there wondering where the heck is the big Jip. I'm tired of Nyok and get Gypsy here. Well, he'll be here tomorrow. He'll be casting with Seriosity. Today, he's playing, but you'll get to see him in the near future. Hopefully you don't get to see him often because that means Gypsy will have been making it through the bracket. Well, I'm of course ro rooting for the big Jip, but he's got a tough opponent uh, coming at him in Ziggy. And again, this season, guys, it's not best of one the whole time. You can see that the elimination match and winner's match and loser's match are all best of three. Yep. And Dragon down 1-0 already to Patek. So it's possible uh, Patek can actually advance first. And it is Ascension. So maybe Patek ban Revolver. And here we have Ascension. Yep. So Ascension is going to be the map choice. Looking at that PVT statistic. Mm, abysmal. 38%. That might be one of the worst statistics for Protoss versus Terran for any map I've ever seen. The other matchups, kind of okay. 45% and 48%. But that means that our players are ready, guys. Let's get into game two. See if Patak can actually win 2 0. All right. All right, in the bottom or in the mid left, our Protoss player, it is Dragon. And then of course, in the bottom right, our blue Zerg, it is Patek. Okay, I, I, I was getting a little hype there. I thought it was gonna be a five pool, but then I realized that Patek only had 40 minerals or so, so he couldn't build that drone. So no aggressive five pool opener. You know, we already saw a five pool in ASL. That was exciting, unfortunately, didn't work out for Queen, but uh, what are some options that Zerg has versus Forge Opener? Like, other than what we saw the Overpool, of course. He could go Nine Pool with the Gas Trick. He can also go Hatch first. And this is also a map that's good for Gateway uh, Expand. It's three player map. You're not going to get cross uh, spawns in any scenario. And looks like it is just going to be uh, standard from both players. Dragon, if he goes out to scout, it's going to indicate it's going to go for Forge. Does not surprise me at all. And then yep, so Protect is... That's an Overlord there that's building, so it's just probably going to be Overpool. And Hatchery first is an option, but when you get scouted first, it no longer becomes uh, viable. Protoss can just pile on it, and there's the pool going down. Yep, so typical opener from Patek. I think Overpool is probably the safe opener these days and luckily for dragon he is just going to scout him first and see exactly what's going on and we know that us players love to deny that hatchery forever so i expect dragon to do the same potentially even build a pylon there and there of course 
is the forge as expected. All right, so one thing to mention on this map, the mains have an extra mineral patch, which helps Protoss. Uh, Protoss is going to stay on two bases longer, so every additional mineral patch, they're just going to mine more minerals faster. And two minutes is around the time the hatchery goes down. Here we see Dragon being annoying. Every second you delay this is a second Zerg won't have Barbara. Oh, just barely manages to get that in. Yeah, nicely done from Patak to sneak that hatchery in. You want to get it down ASAP every second you lose. Could have been potentially a larva available to you. Now we and do we see, see... Mm -hmm. we see the Nexus going down first, cannon right after. Now, because it isn't crossed, you can actually see uh, Dragon cutting probes. So you can get that cannon down right at 13. If you wait any longer, normally cross map, you just make it at 14. But with these adjacent spawns, uh, you can't risk it. And we see two lanes again from Patak. No gas quite yet. Does he make the third hatch before the gas? Does he get that 245 gas? Or, or we're talking about a three minute gas. Yeah, it looks like we're gonna have pretty much the same opener from last game. I don't blame Patak for doing this again. It worked pretty well for him. He survived the early game pressure build or pressure attack from, from Dragon and then just followed up with standard macro and just simply overwhelmed him. So why change? Might as well go for the same opener. And meanwhile, it looks like Dragon's going for the same opener too. Ooh, a drone. He wants that probe, man. Oh, you can actually see the probe can escape from the drone if it, they get to, like if a drone hits the probe once, they can just keep chasing it. But it looks like Patak uh, messed up his micro there and the probe is still alive, but it's actually very low on HP. Uh, this is a little bit different from last game. Last game, we saw the probe stay alive to link speed. This could go down if Dragon doesn't stay on top of it. Yeah, the probe is dangerously low now. He's gotta be careful, but remember last game it was dangerously low too. And he ended up saving it for upwards of five minutes. Now cybernetics is about halfway done. So in about 20 seconds or so, we're going to figure out what the tech pathway is going to be for Dragon. Remember Patak, yeah, he sacked his overlord to figure out exactly what Dragon is doing. And he's still going to go for that same move. He's left his overlord in position to scout exactly what's going on. And Dragon actually going for a little bit faster of a second gas this time around. And we are going to see just a Stargate right after uh, the Cybernetics core is done. And the probe is still alive. Still has about 30 seconds before League and Speed kicks in. And he only made two Lings. Dragon is going to move out with a Zealot pretty soon to put it on some pressure there. Are uh, a couple additional Lings. And the third hatch finishing. We should see Patak saturate then, and everything looks standard so far. Yeah, and I'm paying close attention to Dragon's build. Everything looks pretty much identical. I remember last game, 25 supply, nat gas. That's exactly what happened this time around. Forge is spinning at around 430 mark. If everything goes like it did last game, we're going to see the Citadel come down around 520. He still hasn't placed it just yet. How is that probe still alive? Man, that's crazy. Drag again till the speed is done. He just keeps the probe alive, and he manages to scout the spire timing, everything. This means that Dragon now, with his first Corsair, doesn't have to go to the main, can just over Overlord hunt. And there's Lick Speed, and there's the probe finally going down. Yeah, that's crazy that he got that much intel. And we can see that Dragon has started cutting some of his units. There's the 520 Citadel. So everything so far, guys, exactly the same i mean even i think patak's build is exactly the same oh no it's not slight difference from patak is there's no gas at the natural so a little bit of a switch up there so he's not gonna be going into the mutilus most likely but there is the fifth hatch going down for him this is something i've noticed with dragon but from the first time i watched him play he will always trap that probe with his first corsair like usually Protoss players will wait till they have three, four before they start uh, trapping that probe. But Dragon does it with his first one every single time. It always makes me laugh. Yeah, well, yeah. Like, what's he might? Why? Why does he need <laughs> one clumped up? I, I am also kind of surprised <laughs> at that. I mean, does one probe really matter? Well, maybe not. But uh, for those optimists out there. 
that uh, or for those people that want to optimize their build as much as possible yeah you could have just saved that pro for a few more seconds now speaking of saving units uh patak did not save two of his overlords and that's going to be a huge supply block yeah normally losing one is fine it's acceptable but losing two is going to set you back big time and drag manages to save his course or something he didn't uh, do last game uh, and this is all due to his probe staying alive for that long that he was able to just go straight for the overlords. Yeah, now we see that Patak is not going heavy mutas this time around. He is going into the Hydras uh, much quicker this time around. Dragon still building his Corsair count, though. I'm not sure if he caught a glimpse of the nat gas timing. But here comes that 715 move out. How do those Scourge not see that? how does he not see that and this could be a game ending push because if he was expecting dragon to be sitting in his main and all of a sudden seven zealots just show up at his nat or third base look at the defense it's one sunken and that's it yeah and well actually he did take a third gas and he is gonna make mutas but he's not making units he's making drones and this could catch him off guard because even if you have three mutas the zealots will just ignore that and uh kill these two sunkens right away plus one should be done here the other coming he sees the mutas which is huge now he has five corsairs wow i'm surprised he actually retreated there yeah i guess he was expecting there to be more i i don't know why he's running there's only two sunkens we of course have full vision we know that there's not much there the scourge somehow okay one of them connected but does not connect a second time and take down that Sair. Plus one weapon is kicked into the Sairs. So That's a massive power spike when you have five. Once he gets seven, oh man, do Sairs kill stuff quickly. So Patak needs to be careful. I think he's very lucky that Dragon did not actually just go for it. Okay, if Dragon goes, okay, he's gonna do the same thing and it's gonna work differently this time because unlike the last game, the third base isn't protected behind a small ramp and he's actually making lings and these lings are only to like uh, clump up the zealots and buffer, but there's a lot more space for the zealots to move around here. And this, if Dragon goes for the same attack, I think it's gonna do a lot better. And we'll you can see, see he's actually adding his fifth and sixth gateways on time this uh, game. Yeah, he's ramping up his gateway production. And this time around, he's kept, well, for now, he's kept all of his Sairs alive. What is that, eight Sairs, seven Sairs? Yeah, eight Sairs plus an Archon. Plus they have plus one, and we still don't know if Patak was even upgrading plus one armor. And this could get ugly in an instant. Here come those Sairs, here come those Zealots. The Archon's lagging a little bit, but I don't even think he really needs it. Yeah, he yeah, does have plus I... one armor. There it is. Last game it was uh, six Corsairs against six Mutas and like 20 Scourge, but this time there's not that many Scourge, there's not that many Mutas. Dragon is just going to fight the Scourge from one angle, unlike last game where he was engaged with the Mutas, and he was able to kill all the Scourge, only lost two Corsairs, most of the Corsairs still alive. I think he should just commit here. Yeah, he's got all of his Zealots just sitting there. He sees that the defense is just one, two Sunkins, I think he could easily at least pop the first sunken at the top, but he is content with just sitting here for now. That's gonna buy time for Patak to get out some Hydras, and supplies are decent for Jurat or for Patak. It's 80 to 110. Now that supply block might hurt, but again, Patak is going to hold on. Okay, so Drag not committing, not losing those odds, but it does give Patak time to uh, get out some Hydras, which are gonna help a lot. And how many high templars another thing we saw last game was he, these first two high templars were actually sniped right away not gonna happen this time around and looks like dragon with most of his coursers alive now is actually gonna be able to put on a lot of pressure like even if he doesn't attack how does patak establish air dominance now yeah i don't know what can, patak can really do here he's just gonna have to give up the third base to dragon and then this is ascension where dragons of course gonna have high ground advantage there's really no angle for oh patak man the mutas the mutas the mutas yeah they're he can so get, but he can get the high templars he can sack like this could look similar to last game except dragon has seven coursers last time he had one and if Patak ever decides to move out with the Hydras, his uh, overlords are going to be exposed back at home. Well, he and... did. He did take oh. down one of those Templars. But the Mutas get caught in response. Scourge are going to come and try and save the day. But look at that Archon bodyguard. 
Ooh, come here, boys. Oh, he just barely missed a hit there onto the Scourge. But look at Dragon ramp up in supply now. He's almost at 140. Yeah, plus one done for protect, plus one armor should be drum for Dragon. He's getting goon range, still hasn't switched into goons. Uh, we have seven, I think, eight gateways. And Patak has his large uh, Scourge Fleet, which he needs because, again, Dragon still has a lot of Corsairs alive. Cannons being set up, range coming in. That means Dragoons are going to be coming out in just a second. Meanwhile, Patak is trying to take his fourth base. It gets instantly spotted by these Sairs. Something we haven't seen this game is a single DT. He would be able to get some damage at the, at the fourth base of Patak done right now if one was out. But here come those goons, and all of a sudden, Dragon's army is starting to get really scary. Oh, Scourge going to intercept these Sairs. One, to, one goes down. Not able to catch any more, though. Oh, 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 what? Surprise, Dragon committed there. The Mutas and Scourge have plus one, and he was able to actually kill all, off all of the Corsairs. Now, Patak has an interesting choice here. Does he actually go Mutas here to defend this big push? If he can snipe the higher tempos, no, it looks like no. He has lurkers set up on this high ground just in time. Dragon is going to have a very difficult time either trying to breaking, uh, break through this high ground or going through that small choke. But he does have a third. Oh, it looks like he's going to go through a small choke. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. But luckily for him, there's no lurkers set up. And the Zelda are just going to flood into the natural, at least for now. Oh, that's an amazing lurker morph that's going to buy so much time for Patek. He keeps, what, 20 Zealots from actually getting in. And look at the left side, those Templars. Okay, that's a good storm, blanketing a lot of the Hydras and Lurkers. And Patak, he is going to get blanketed by a ton of these storms, but a miraculous defense at the natural. Yeah, that was a huge, uh, usually clutch play with the Lurkers. Kept out all the Hydras, all the Zealots with just two Hydras. And you can see this is a very nice wall. Zealots weren't able to get through. But is Dragon just going to have too much? You can see him reinforcing two Lurker Spines. But there's only one Lurker left over. Attack has units on the high ground. But this is uh, a lot of Dragoons here. Does he have any High Templars with Storm left over? Looks like the Hydras from the high ground are flanking. Can Dragon reinforce? Otherwise, he's just going to lose his entire army. But I think a lot of damage has already been done. Yeah, he did a lot of damage, but he is going to lose his full army. And if we look at the supplies, it's now 90 to 80. And remember, Patak still has four bases. But as I say that, I'm looking at the minimap, and Dragon behind this has taken a fourth base himself. So both players are just going to reset their armies, but they are both going to have pretty even econ right now. Yeah, that was, a, I mean, that Lurker morph saved Patak. Yeah. That was huge. That was huge. That was clutch, as you stated. And we are actually going to transition into mid and late game. Lurkers are going to be bamboozled by this small goon zealot attack. I think this is actually going to get cleaned up, though. My dragon has to save these dragoons. Dragoons are very important here. You don't really want to remake those. Looks like he loses one. He did get two lurkers and a meter there, so it's fine. Plus one. Armor and weapon done for Protoss. Hydras are on plus two. You should see plus two armor done for Protoss pretty soon. And Dragon on four Nexuses. This is actually uh, a little bit scary for Patak. If Dragon can now add additional gateways, go up to like maybe 12, uh, Patak is still on Lair Tech. And it could be a little bit scary if you're still on Lair Tech against Protoss as four bases, unless you have an overwhelming uh, amount of hatcheries. But for now, Dragon is safe and secure on these four bases, and he's just powering up again. Gonna wait for another big push. Yeah, and the Queen's Nest did just start, so Hive's gonna start pretty soon. There's the plus two armor power spike. We see a ton of Protoss players doing that these days. But supply is still very close, 130 to 113. I am, st I, I also am worried for Patak because, like you said, it's four base Protoss versus a Zerg that's still stuck on Lair Tech. And this is Ascension. Where do you take your fifth base? It's it's so far away. Yeah, and it's hard for... Unlike a lot of maps, Ascension is pretty easy for Protoss to defend uh, his third and fourth. You can see the same high ground uh, kind of controls the area that goes to either base. And Attack is just going to go 
for the Slurker Hydra defense on his high grounds. Dragon can actually even take a fifth here if he wanted. Yeah, he can take that base in the center left position where his entire army is. And actually, Patak is going to mimic that. He's going to take the top position or top fifth base. But Dragon's getting close to being maxed out. He's at 150 supply. I guess Patak has realized that, hey, that's maybe not the safest base. He's going to cancel it and reposition it either the natural at top at the top or the main. Probably the main so a few lurkers can defend the choke. Yeah, he's going to go for the main. Dragon does see it with an observer. But this is where it becomes a little bit hard for Patak to defend with lurkers when he's this... Uh, like, he's going to be spread thin here. And... Dragon has this huge army, he has nice upgrades, double forge behind this, so he's gonna get plus three and plus two. And the high ground is to his favor, but if Dragon can land enough storms here, he can break this. Yeah, there's not that many lurkers, but it is up high ground. There's a lot of lurkers morphing behind. Those storms are not the greatest. That's pretty good, and now lurkers are going to complete, but that's still so many Dragoons left over. Dragon may have found his window of opportunity. More Lings and more Lurkers trying to move into position, but there's just nothing really buffering. Okay, actually the Lings are buffering quite a bit for the Lurkers now. Yeah, the Lings actually don't do any damage with the two armor, but they do get in front of the Dragoons. If he had another round of Lings here, the Lurkers alone are not great against Dragoons. We have Hydras reinforcing. Lurkers coming in from the back. Dragon not reinforcing this area, but it just has these goons spread out well enough that their uh, the lurker spines are being minimized, and Dragon is breaking through here. Yeah, and he is going to break that base because he's got reinforcements moving across the map. Remember, he knew that a bunch of lurkers moved out of position to top middle, so he used that opportunity to capitalize, and now he has the high ground over this third base and fourth base. Yeah, Evolution Chamber gonna go down. I just coming in from the back, uh, but it's hard for Patak from this position to group everything without just losing straight groups of units here. He has to bring in everything from his new base to defend this location. Three hatchers here, a healthy base. Everything's gonna go down. Yeah, he's been breached, and that's not just the third hat or third base going down. That's gonna be three hatches going down, and that's gonna reset Patak down to almost no larva production available to him and it's just moments away from gg because look at the supply 170 to just 85 dragon has done it and he is moments away from tying up the score one to one yeah plus two plus two done for Protoss. and again these links have no upgrades so they're actually doing no damage here this is why it's a little bit risky to go for hive and trying to take a fifth base on this map like it's hard to defend and if you're going to switch into Lings, like, the Lings just do nothing. And you just got to stay Hydro Lurker longer. And, I mean, just too difficult here for Protect. And Dragon manages to tie it up. Yep, nicely done from Dragon there. Capitalizes on his window of opportunity. Thought he was going to let it fade away in the early stages when he had his seven Zealots versus just really one Sunken and one Muta. But in the end still takes the game and that is going to be a tied score and now we're going to be going into or momentarily going to be going into game three but this time around it's going to be Patak's pick it's not going to be Harper right 90% sure Dragon will just ban that map so if Patak picks Aztec it's still going to be difficult for Dragon on that map yeah uh, I, I agree that probably it's going to be a veto on Heartbreak Ridge Aztec is going to be hard, but I mean, Protoss is still very strong on three bases, and in the fourth base, you're going to have high ground. We still have Revolver available. Now, you have to remember, even though Zerg might, in an ideal world, want to play on Aztec, how much experience does Patak have on Aztec these days? If it's me, I'm vetoing Aztec, even if it's a good matchup for me simply because i'm playing revolver more often these days that's probably true you gotta factor that in that these old maps they're they don't see that much practice or any to be honest yes yeah. unless you're playing an stpl uh, where you see a lot of old maps get picked so you have to consider that i think that's gonna be the reason we're gonna see revolver i mean that's my choice every other map 
if Wavelet gets picked, I mean, at least it's standard, right? It, it wouldn't shock me to see that. But if we see like Vertebrae get picked, that would be a, a complete wrench thrown into this series. Uh, so again, guys, we are just waiting for the players to be ready and then we'll, oh, well, <laughs> looks like people are gonna see that I'm not actually in the studio right now. Uh, sometimes i get too excited thinking about the game <laughs> and I tell, then i teleport there we go nobody saw that that's that's not on the bingo card niokin's green screen falls not on the bingo card nope no there's gonna be no bingos today actually i've been kind of paying attention to the bingo so i think i'm at like three or four I mentioned yeah. artosis. You mentioned artosis. Yeah. yeah, I mentioned artosis. I said it's a bit surprising. Uh, you you said the thing is. Luckily, that's a big jip bingo, not a seriosity bingo. <laughs> so we're not going to get that centerpiece today. Uh, all right. What else can we talk about for BSL? We've got Group B coming up tomorrow. Oh, actually, I meant to ask. You know, every season. There's a group of death. Have you looked at the groups? Is there one that stands out to you? Okay, let me check. So actually group B is tomorrow and it's gonna be a pretty stacked lineup. We've got Crossy, we've got Dark, we've got Ultra and Quark. We know that Crossy, obviously, he's really damn good. He's like 2,500 MMR. Quark's really freaking good too. And Ultra has improved like, it's noticeable. If you watch the past two seasons of Ultra playing compared to his previous seasons, it's night and day. It, 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 it's light and day. Night and day. Ultra has done a really good job to improve his Terran versus Terran in particular and his Terran versus Zerg. Now, Dark is a bit of a newcomer, but I think I'm going to go with Group B here. Yeah, so Group B is very strong, but I'm looking at Group D. Oh yeah, Group D. I'm looking at it right now there. Ziki, Oya, Striker, and G Dark, Ghost of Dark. That is another stack of lineup. Actually, Group D, E, and F are all are all very strong. Group C is gonna be interesting because we have our Chinese representative, Mihu, playing. I think Mihu did a show match versus Bonneth recently. I don't remember the exact score, but the Chinese players are very, very good. Yeah. So, Ah, uh, so Zero just told me that it was six to three for Mihu, and then Mihu beat the Walt today five to four. So actually, Chinese players could be contending to actually take the whole BSL. Now, when you see this graphic, that means that our players are ready, correct? So we're gonna. Oh, there it is. There's the revolver. Now, Seriosity, I know, is very happy to see this for his boy Dragon, but this is going to be game three, guys. This is. Uh, what it all comes down to, can Dra Dragon make it out, or will it be Patak moving out in first place of this group? All right, in the top left, our Zerg player. It is Patak. And then in the top right, our Protoss. It is Dragon. So add Jason Spawns. This is already looking good for a uh, dragon. In ZVP, you kind of want to be adjacent to Zerg as Protoss so that you limit the way they can expand. And as long as it's not vertical, vertical makes it a little bit different because of the rush distances. You got to uh, think about your openings a little bit more. You can't get away with 13 13. This is similar to Circuit Breaker, where vertically there's a, a lot less. Uh, rush distance between that and that and dragon this is another good gateway map but it's dragon so i'm gonna predict we're gonna see forge i'm gonna remember that next time i off race as zerg versus dragon it's be like oh this dragon that's gonna be hatch first for me bro and then that's gonna be another hatch and another hatch <laughs> power <laughs> as much as i possibly can now this time around dragon not gonna get lucky he is actually going to last Scout Patak, and was this a nine pool? This is a nine pool. Now this is nine pool speed or gastric. Let's see. Does he actually cancel? Okay, so this 
So Ooh. I know what the tech is thinking here. There's two entrances into the natural. So we're going to go nine pool speed, make a lot of links and get in there. But it's actually <laughs> not that easy. Uh, Protoss can get some nice walls here and we see, whoa, what the heck is this? This is not what I was thinking about. So normally you mm. forge gateway the left side and then you only have to worry about the other ramp. But this is a gateway going to be on top of that pylon. And then there's going to be one gap there and then another gap at the ramp. Dragon does always double scout though. So he's not going to be caught off guard. He is going to see there's going to be six and probably eight and then 10, 12 links. So he's going to have to make two cannons right away. And then let's see how he plays from there. If he makes a third cannon before Nexus. Zerg is nine pulling with speed. So this is a very, very heavy investment into units. Yeah, and yeah, <laughs> heavy investment is an understatement. I mean, this is big time commitment from Patak. And by the time he gets to Protoss's base, uh, I don't think he'll be able to cancel the speed, right? Like he's just gonna be committed to this. Now, I don't even see a drone being sent out to the natural or anything. Wow, he's just continuing to build links. So we may even see what like probably three cannons maybe a gateway yeah. for sure giant is spotting like if he just keeps seeing uh links he's gonna make that third cannon like it's safe and economically you're not any worse off so already getting one link huge three cannons is good and then all dragon has to worry about is getting a nexus and then blocking the entries because even if you get three cannons like a link run by is still viable so we'll see what Dragon does here. There's that Nexus gonna go down. Yeah, and I, like you're saying, I mean, there's just not, okay, is he gonna go right now? There's not a lot of area to run by. Like you look at it and you're like, okay, there's two ways that he can go the top side or the ramp, but uh, okay, probes are out of position, Dragon. Okay, he kills like a couple there. But yeah, how do you get up this ramp? I mean, this ramp is super tight too. Like you can just hold position one probe and nothing can get by. It can the lings go through the top side and avoid the cannons? <laughs> I, I mean, what? It would be close. Dragon has to be careful though, because I think he should bring a couple more probes here to the natural because more lings can come and he doesn't have any more scouting. Wow, it's just more lings, dude. Like. If I'm Zerg and see three cannons already set up, I don't know if I'm thinking about building more links, but Patak, he's going for it. I mean, now he's just started to drone. Actually, there's a probe hidden out on the out on the map. I didn't even realize. And he's going to come in for a secondary scout. Yeah, that's going to be key. If Jack sees there's not any drones at the net, then he, he basically wins. Uh, <laughs> Patak is trying to get in there. I mean... He's trying to get something done. First Zealot is gonna out, be out pretty soon and Drag sees the net, sees nothing here. He's gonna go into the main Caesar's gas mining. And I mean, I think Drag is already won this game. Like it's, he has a scout on the map. He sees everything. He just has to be safe and secure here. Like links are coming back now. He sees drones and saw no tech, so. Hydras are the only options here. He should realize this. Yep, and there is the Hydra Den, as you pointed out. And first Zealot is out, so even if those Lings could get by, well, they're not long for this world anymore. They're going to get taken down quite okay. easily. Then I'm confused. If Patak could have just gone through the top mineral patch, those cannons are slightly out of range. And those five Lings, like maybe one cannon would have been able to shoot. I think that was a better option than just staying behind the mineral patches. Yeah, uh, I mean, they in the end didn't do anything. They killed, what, like 90% of the health from the Zealot, but it's just going to replenish now. And that means that Dragon is just going to go into the mid game in a pretty fantastic position. But Patak, he is going for another really aggressive follow up, and this could catch Dragon off guard. We'll have to see. Well, he does have only two on gas. Like, his mineral income was so low. He actually took off gas so he can get a little bit more. He's making hydras now, but this is also not a great map to hydra bus. Additionally, yeah. Protoss already has three cannons. Like, you're going to have to come in through that tiny choke with the eggs because the ramp is not viable, and Jag is going to have a lot of time to add more cannons. So... 
I would be surprised if we saw a single drone made from this point. I think this is going to be pure Hydra and hope he can bust with this. Yeah, and this is not 973 either. This is, what, 7-7? Seven, seven? I mean, Patak has no drones. He has 14 drones mining minerals right now. So this is about as all-in as you're going to get. And the Sare, I think, has already seen the Hydra, so he already knows. And you can see that probe's already moving into position to build more cannons. Yeah, and I mean, four Zalots and three cannons, he's going to have a lot of time here. And Dragon knows how ahead he is economically. I would not be surprised if he made more cannons than there are Hydras. Well, Dragon has the benefit of he off races, or he main races Zerg versus Protoss. So he, when he sees this, he knows like, okay, I'm fine. I just have to not die. This guy doesn't have any drones. Now the Hydras do knock down the gateway, but as you stated, there's already three. I think this can't even get busted. Here he comes though. Lings are gonna jump on a cannon that's not even completed. And you can see this was a complete disaster for Patak. He doesn't even kill a single cannon there. He doesn't even kill a single Zealot. Yeah, still just making Hydras because from the opener, he was committed. And you can see Dragon is not even gonna go into, uh, what's it called? High Templars. He can just outproduce Patak from this scenario with pure Zealot and end the game that way. Forge in the back, I, I, I now realize why he made the Forge that way, so it can't get picked off by Hydras. And it actually makes sense in a way. And here we go again. I just managed to get one damage to the cannon, get another one, but they can't actually move forward now. There's more Zealots than Hydras now. And five, six gateways from Dragon. He's going to be able to pump out a ton of units. And it looks like the Corsair actually killed an Overlord as well. Yeah, I mean, this Corsair has free reign over the air because the Hydras have to attack. I mean, there's no fallback for Patak. He has to win now. And I think speed has already kicked in. Yeah, he just jumps on these Hydras, and we are moments away from seeing Patak exit. There it is. GG. Dragon has done it, and he's going to be our first into the round of 16, making it out of out in first place of Group A. Yeah, very, very uh, easy victory there for Dragon. Like, the ninth pool, followed by three Hatch just was not the play. And... Patak actually looked a lot stronger in those macro games, even game two, which he lost. Uh, but game three, Dragon just won easily. Advances out of his group first, and we'll be following it up with the losers match between Gypsy and Ziggy. Yep, TVT gonna be coming up next, guys. So definitely get the popcorn. It's gonna be fireworks, and it's gonna be a long show. Uh, so we're gonna go into a quick break, and then we'll be back with a the elimination match, actually, and we'll find out who's gonna be out of the BSL already in just a few minutes.
guys, we are back. We just saw Dragon make it out in first place of Group A. And that means Patak will be waiting in the Deciders match. And now we're going to find out who's just gone from the BSL. Is it going to be Ziggy? Is it going to be Gypsy? One of these Terran players don't have long for this world. And we are going to be going into game one momentarily. Of course, players have to prepare and we need to get into the game. Uh, what is our map going to be? for the losers match zero. Oh, Aztec coming at us. Was not expecting to hear that. Now that is an old school map as we pointed out. And drops are very potent on there. We've actually seen a resurgence in drops, so that might actually come into play. And even though on the graphic, we saw that there is no drop, uh, no platform overlooking the natural, it is actually the more modern version where there actually will be a platform, so we may see somebody go for a tank drop, but um, it's a bit unlikely unless Terror was playing. <laughs> this, yeah, unlike Tau Cross, the drop uh, area here is not huge at the natural, so you can fit in maybe two tanks and a Goliath, three tanks, something like that. But I mean, it's still always an option, very annoying to deal with high ground tanks. and. As far as this map goes in this matchup, I'm looking at the mineral only third. That's not a great base to take. So should see a very aggressive TBT trying to take out position in the middle of the map and take out uh, take those uh, third gases. Yeah, now I know how Gypsy likes to play. So we'll see if he will be the aggressor here. He loves to go for the Vulture opener, try and get control over the center of the map, but as I stated earlier, my experience versus Ziggy is he's not necessarily Vulture Man, but he will fight for position over your natural, for example, and get into a nice tank contain. So this is going to be, I think, a quite even matchup because, like I said, Ziggy is really darn good, at least in the early stages of TVT. We see that not many games played for either players, just six games played for the big Jip. Meanwhile, a decent more, a decent amount more games for uh, Ziggy, but still not that many. So, not really a big indicator. Of, oh, well, look at the, as I stated earlier, look at the win rate versus Terran. Actually, a zero percent win rate. I find that surprising because Ziggy's TVT really is strong. So, uh, maybe today will be his first uh, victory TVT. Here's a look at the map, Aztec. As you can see, looking over the natural, there is no platform according to the picture, but in the game, uh, in the more modern version, there is. Zero has told me that players are ready. Let's get into the first game of our elimination series. It's gonna be Gypsy versus Ziggy. So in the bottom left, our blue Terran is Gypsy. And then in the top middle, let's say Root, Root for Root, it is Ziggy. Oh, apparent. Oh yeah, I forgot Ziggy plays StarCraft 2. So apparently he has joined Root uh, Root Team, which is obviously very popular in StarCraft 2. And they have a lot of very talented players. All right, so Gypsy in this base, he will probably take, I would think, that uh, middle base as his third, right? If we were to get to that point of the game. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, expanding away from the opponent. It also has the gas, which you want, so you would expect him to take that. But if he was to expand to the top side, that also would be okay because he'll be defending that while also having potential to just instantly like go for a drop and continuing, uh, can continue to like elevator over and over. So that could be an option. Both players making the barracks uh, near the edge of the base. Don't really see Marines here, so just want to get that quick scout. Both going for 12 gas, everything mirrored. Should see everything the same for about the next three minutes. Yeah, now you were telling me Ziggy likes to go for two-fact in Terran versus Protoss. I'm trying to think if he ever two-facted me Terran versus Terran. I don't think so. I think he just played pretty normal, so I don't expect to see shenanigans from either player but remember we already saw Ziggy versus Patak he did continue to mine the gas so he may have something up his sleeve 
Both players are going to scout each other first, so that's going to be great for both sides. From what I know, this is his favorite matchup, and he really enjoys the drawn out TBT, the tactical play of the matchup. So it would really surprise me to see uh, something cheesy from Ziggy. I I think he just wants to play a long TBT every time he gets one. Yeah, I also agree with that. I do think that Ziggy likes the TBT. And we do see that both players have pulled off of gas, so not going to be a two-fact opener from either player. Now, knowing Gypsy, I know that the likelihood of him one-basing is almost zero, but he does like to go for the three-factory vulture play, so that's what I'm expecting to see. Meanwhile, we'll have to see what Ziggy wants to do. My experience is he does go tank vulture. We'll see if that's what he wants to opt for this time around. Uh, this map is on a reverse ramp, so your main is actually lower than your natural. But your natural is actually higher than the rest of the map. So it's pretty easy to defend if you just hold the ramp that leads towards your natural. And the large ramp that's around the third is just uh, a lot farther to go that way. So it's pretty good for defending any kind of early aggression. And uh, like you said, Gypsy going right away for Vulture Ziggy as well. Command center down for Gypsy slightly faster than Ziggy's. Only difference so far in the game. Yeah, just slightly. Not not anything. No. Okay. Four Marines. Don't know how I missed that, but that is going to be a lot of pressure being sent at Gypsy. And this is starting to remind me of like something SPX likes to do. Like he loves to do these types of moves. And I think Gypsy might be in a bit of trouble if he doesn't actually build a bunker. Sure, he's going to have Vulture advantage with his reinforcements, but uh, Ziggy's going to get across the map quite quickly too, so this is going to be a delicate situation for Gypsy here. Look at... Oh, I thought that was the units coming from the top side. I forgot about this tiny ramp, so actually this shouldn't be as dangerous as I was anticipating. Well, unless you just lit him up! Be, it's got to be on the ramp, though. It's actually micring the Vultures away. Oh, misses around there, but now it's three vultures, and this should actually be pretty easy. Ziggy has a very low vulture in the back, and the Marines actually had a lot of DPS, but they just died to hit, so it's not really that big of a threat. There's like a lot of micro here going down. Gypsy just has to target the vulture, and he actually defends this pretty easily, and that was a decent investment there from Ziggy. So now his command center is a little bit later, and he has all those minerals. That's 200 minerals, well, actually 150 because he only made three more than Gypsy. So that's yeah. a pretty big deal, I think. Yeah, he did lose the additional three Marines in comparison to Gypsy, but Gypsy lost an additional Vulture, so it's it's okay. It's a fine trade. Now, meanwhile, that is three fact for, for, for Ziggy that I saw there. I can notice that he didn't send that many SCVs to his natural, though, so his saturation is not as ideal like look at that it's just five and if that barracks land oh that hurts quite a bit because of course vultures do not have a lot of dps so that's a ton of lost mining potential for ziggy he even gets two of them trapped two scvs trapped big win there for gypsy yeah it's gonna be a while before this barracks is forced to the left and i mean it's just looking good for gypsy Wow, oh, they're doing the same builds, but Gypsy has more SCVs at the Naturals Mining, and now we have this block here. Both players fully scouted, and I mean, it looks like Ziggy's trying to get.
Alright guys, we're back and we see that Gypsy has set up a... Mm, somewhat of a contain in the center of the map. It looks like Ziggy has tried to take his third base on the low ground. The reason he's taking that one is, of course, it has the gas there as opposed to the mineral only at the right side. Meanwhile, Gypsy has already taken that and he's taking his fourth base at the mineral only. And, is that a fifth base? Yeah, fifth base. We still don't know his factory count, but you can see... Obviously, supplies heavily in his favor. He's up 50 right now. Yeah, and Ziggy, without that third gas, is actually going to fall further and further behind. And you can see Gypsy, all he has to do is get in range of this gas. He doesn't even have to deny the command center, but he's moving forward, using the vultures to take tank fires, and now he's in a very, very good position. Goliaths from Ziggy, I think this is from the earlier Wraith play, and Goliaths are not what you want here. Like, you see how quickly they die to tanks. Yeah, and... All that matters is that those two tanks at the top survive, and that means that he's going to still be able to deny this third base. Tank might be able to kill one of them. Nope, it gets taken down, and... Okay, one of them got taken down, but the race going to clean up the tanks in the center of the map. And that's all she wrote. Ziggy, he is going to lose game one after a failed four-fact four fact vulture. But it was dicey, those four vultures that Gypsy threw away. I thought for sure that that was going to be the game changer and all Ziggy needed to pull out a victory. Yeah, well, during the break, we were talking with Nyokin and Gypsy was so close to dying at a couple points there. Just like Ziggy had like eight more vultures. The Wraith, okay, it can kill SCVs and Ziggy doesn't have economy. But if Ziggy just had mines and laid them on top of that tank or additionally not targeted that tank and instead targeted vultures, like one tank doesn't have enough DPS to deal with the four fact vulture that was incoming his way yeah i mean i've seen games where there's just so many so many vultures that it just doesn't even matter if they have mines the vultures still just take down the tank but the scv surround was game changing to a lot of damage actually but uh gypsy manages to eke out a win the racks man it did a lot of damage in the rate too it ended uh, up dying but it denied so yeah. much mining and yeah. trapped an scv and it saw what was going on the whole time he saw that this guy's not building scvs so what does that mean of course he's just you know streaming out units well now it's going to be ziggy's pick and I'm trying to think is there any map that's just actually i think really good for ziggy i think if i was ziggy i would probably pick aztec because that feels mm. no no not aztec ascension ascension is what i would pick and the reason i would pick that is because it feels very punishing if you get contained there like if you get contained there you're done there's no hope for you so and i know how ziggy likes to play aggro 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 so i think we could see ascension picked we are going into the statistics again remember this is the elimination match guys so if ziggy loses here unfortunately his bsl run is going to be donezo and that would mean Gypsy is going to move on to face Patak in the elimination, elimination match. We are just waiting for players, of course, and then we'll be getting into game two. I kind of want to see Ziggy face off versus Patak again. And the reason is I want to see how he fixes his mech opener, like how he responds to what Patak did to him in game one. Yeah, but for that to happen, Gypsy would have to yeah. be eliminated from BSR. Yeah, so <laughs> I don't know what more, what to root for more, but it looks like our players have decided on a map. It is going to be Revolver. This is match point for Gypsy. If he wins here, he's going to be moving on to face Patak. Okay, in the top left, our Polish Terran, it is Ziggy. And then in the bottom left, our blue Terran, you know who it is. It's the big chip. It's a revolver, vertical spawns. Uh, quick rush distances, but because the natural's on a high ground, like Vulture against Vulture Wars will always favor the defender and it's kind of awkward to attack into that natural anyway. Are we likely to see maybe Rax expand or are we just still going to see factory expand? 
useful. I know Gypsy does have Rax Expand in his arsenal. I think more than likely he's just going to probably go for the 12 gas. I think he wants to not risk losing in a weird fashion. So I think he'll probably just go for a standard 12 gas. One thing to point out about Revolver is if you get close enough, you can range the Nat Gas with tanks. Like it is similar to Match Point in that sense, where if there is an overwhelming amount of tanks, one player could have their gas denied. So that is something to keep in mind. We do see the barracks has already started for Ziggy. Meanwhile, Gypsy starting his. <laughs> you also have the droppable area behind the net. Not like Aztec where it's on a high ground, but still annoying. Yeah, we already saw Gypsy go for a drop versus Dragon. Didn't work out, but... We could see that come into play again here on Revolver. Now, if I saw that correctly, Gypsy was scouting to top left. So this will be a first scout for him. Meanwhile, ooh, is it? Yeah, okay. It is going to be a, f ooh, maybe not. Yeah, it is going to be first scout for Gypsy. Meanwhile, Ziggy was already halfway across the map and he's going to find Gypsy again in bottom left position. So both players are going to have a good read on each other. All right, so one Marine was made by Gypsy last game, and Ziggy was the one who was aggressive and made four. Again, a questionable decision because you have to push up a ramp. But like you said, Ziggy is aggressive, aggressive, aggressive. Factory there for Ziggy, and he already took off gas. Same with Gypsy. Yep, both players pretty much doing mirrored builds. This time around, you can see that... Oh, I was going to say you can see that there's more Marines being pumped out for Ziggy, but that's because I forgot... He didn't just stick on one. He ended up building four. So again, we may see another pressure. Oh my gosh. It's just not <laughs> his day. I think that is a locked in SCV. I'll be honest here. When stuff like this happens to me in the early game and it's like ladder, it's like, okay, well, is this really going to happen to me in a tournament? I'll just leave. Not because it's like, you know, obviously deciding the game or something, but it's something that just doesn't happen. And unfortunately this unlikely scenario did just happen to ziggy here and one scv at the 230 mark does make a big difference now that's one way to catch back up is you save your scv while killing the opponent's scv and gypsy actually made two marines this game is two marines standard yeah two marines is pretty standard you don't want to get overrun by for example what Ziggy did last game, or like rallied three vultures when you only have two. So building that additional marine does actually help out in defending that. Uh, I I don't think on revolver in particular you probably need it because you have that high ground weird ramp. But uh, I guess Gypsy just wants to be safe this time around. Meanwhile, we see both players have gone into their second factory. Both players still on one gas or one on gas now. Of course, Gypsy puts back on but I'm, I'm sure we're just gonna see similar openers to three fact from both players oh no add-on already okay now was it two or three because I think Ziggy's vultures out were out faster than gypsies but his add-on was faster than Ziggy so I'm not too sure how many vultures actually Ziggy has. I guess maybe it's just two, but Barracks is going to come in here and see that this is, again, another three-fact opener from Gypsy. Yep, Ziggy trying to zone out that Barracks, but full scouting information from Gypsy. He doesn't get into the main to see, and what is this pro What is this researching at the add-on? That's a little bit curious to me. Yeah, it could be anything. It could be mines, it could be speed. It could be siege mode because of what I said. You can range the gas, potentially. So, I, I guess, yeah, there's a tank. So, this is actually going to be a strong push from Ziggy. Now, you have to be careful when you make moves like this because even though you have a tank, has a lot of health, has a lot of damage, you only have yeah. one of them. <laughs> and In my experience, things like this don't work against 3 fact Vulture because the other Terran can just pull a couple SCVs, kill the tank, and then you get overrun by the vultures. But it looks like it was mines. 
And yeah. Mines is also a little bit curious to me because Gypsy is only making Vultures. And here we go. First engage, man. This is going to go bad for Ziki, I think. Look how quickly the Vultures die. Yeah, and now there's going to be five Vultures left with Rally Reinforcement Advantage, obviously in favor of Gypsy. Also, he has speed. So he's, yeah, this is why you don't do tank Vulture pushes these days is you just get eaten up. And the mines don't even help him either. Look at that. The Marine or the the Vulture's trying to body block the tank so that they can't escape. Now that could have been dangerous. The Marine just pulling a, a mine into his friends, but luckily for Gypsy, it doesn't connect. Now he's gonna run into the natural, take down this Vulture, and now the SCV line has been breached. Luckily, a Goliath is gonna save the day while these SCVs have been escorted. Yeah, but pull, pull from uh, Ziggy, and he lost three, four SCVs, and Gypsy will eventually have mines himself so even if ziggy can build up a, a force of maybe like two tanks three goliaths he won't be able to push safely and of course there's a threat of a counter at any point yeah like okay that's that's what i was waiting to see is does he have the academy the answer is yes so at least if he wants to push he... oh there may not be a push because mines on top of the tanks, on top of the Goliath. Goodbye tank, goodbye second tank. And there's no defense now for Ziggy versus two vultures just wreaking havoc in the natural. And there's mines already set up and he can't spot them at all. Yeah, so he's forced back into his main, but this is already so much economic damage. Trying to, bro, oh, he's gonna push, he's oh! gonna eat this mine. Oh man, the tank is very low and look at the SCVs. They're just dying to the vultures. Oh, and this is not what Ziggy had in mind. That tank is dangerously low. Gypsy not going to get overly eager there and try and pounce on it. And you can see Ziggy is trying to trigger some mines without losing anything. He may actually trigger two right there. Oh, goodbye, Mar <laughs> goodbye Marine. He's like, nah, you're not gonna trigger that. And this might actually, oh, he's gonna kill Goliath maybe? Oh, he almost triggered that mine and then he could have one-shotted the Goliath. But look at that, the SCV line is just non-existent. And then those four aren't even mining. So Ziggy needs a Hail Mary here to get back into this game. Otherwise his BSL hopes are gonna be done. Yeah, you can see he's gonna try to push with tank alive. Looks like Gypsy actually ate one of the two mines that was set up here. So he's gonna have to repair this tank. And <clears throat> supplies are pretty close because uh, the vultures that he keeps trading off for SCVs are what's determining that like two a vultures two supply trades after SCVs, but gypsy's taking a third he's switching into tanks now getting additional factories all he has to do is get set up and he has a huge economic advantage yep and like i said ziggy likes to bring it to you you can see that even though he is down he does still try and move into position try and find the the hole in Gypsy's defense that he can exploit. Unfortunately, there just isn't any right now. So instead, he's going to back off, try and take a third base himself. He sees that Gypsy's already taken one, so he's feeling the pressure and obligated to take one. Actually, supplies aren't as bad as I thought after all the damage that has been done. It's 66 to 52, and Wraith might actually get something done here. Right, but Gypsy's taking that third. He's going to have a huge boost pretty soon. Wraith being annoying here, but just one, and Gypsy already has an armory. Looks like Gypsy, two add-ons, third gang setup. It's gonna be pretty hard for Ziggy to, uh, to attack into this with just tank the lives in this low uh, numbers. He might be able to get in range of the gas. That's about the best he can hope to accomplish here. Yeah, but the Rax is about to die and he's gonna lose vision, so. Okay, well, it has more health than I thought. It's got about 60 health, and oh my god, the scan is perfect. He unseeds it. He, is he actually just going to try and force the fight? Yeah, he has an overwhelming tank count, so he's going to try and force it, but actually, this does allow Ziggy to get on top of some of the tanks, but it doesn't matter, because that one tank in the back isn't in range of anything, and that's going to be four Goliaths down for just one tank. Yeah, and Gypsy easily defends. Ziggy was taking a third behind us, but he has to float it over compared to Gypsy's on-site uh, third and like commanding lead here for Gypsy. Superior tank count, superior economy, and faster third. 
be a massive advantage for Gypsy right now. I even saw his armory spinning, so plus one advantage. That means it's going to be plus two advantage as we get into the mid game. He just has complete control over everything. Oh, D Knight, thank you for the big donation right there, dude. See WGT in your tag, maybe from the old school WGT tour days. Thank you so much for the support. And there is the GG. Unfortunately, Ziggy's run is done. And Gypsy's going to be moving on into the deciders match versus Patak. Yeah, just the tank vulture timing. It's too risky. You get caught out of position and you saw Gypsy was able to run around with the vultures. Got a ton of damage done and very clean victory for Gypsy. Yeah. I mean, that looks like a lot of my games because I'm not a big vulture man guy. I don't really do that build very often, but when I did do tank vulture pushes, vultures deal surprising amounts of damage. You think like, okay, I got a tank. I'm not scared of vultures, but when they have like 20 vultures and you have three vultures in one tank, I mean, even, <laughs> if the, even if the vulture only does four damage, when there's 15 of them hitting you all at once, all of a sudden that's a lot of DPS. So uh, just a little bit of a build order counter really for Gypsy there in game two and he is going to move on. And that means we've got an EU versus NA rematch. Gypsy took down Patak in the EU versus NA Continental Battle. So you know Patak wants some revenge here. But before we get into that match, we go into a break, and then we'll find out who's coming out in second place of Group A.
guys. Time for some more BSL action. It's the deciders match. This is the last series of the day. Unfortunately, Ziggy, he is gone. He put on a good showing today. Had great game versus Patek. And had good games versus Gypsy, but unfortunately Gypsy just the better player today. But this sets us up for Gypsy versus Patek. We saw Gypsy versus Patek, or at least I saw Gypsy versus Patek in the EU versus NA Continent of Isle. Uh, unfortunately, that day Patek missed his timing a little bit and Gypsy reigned supreme. So you know Patek really, really wants to win today. Yeah, and I mean, <clears throat> Gypsy is something like Dragon against Zerg, where he just he's just going to hit his timings. So you have to play crisp and clean, and if you don't, you're just going to die. Yeah, that is correct. You know, often I talk about how uh, if they build this building at this moment, they're going to be attacking at this moment, or this upgrade kicks in at this moment. Uh, Gypsy knows all those timings because I talk with him a lot about strategy uh, as a Terran player, of course, and I'm good friends with him. And Patak... Uh, he had good timings versus Dragon. Like, he looked impressive in the macro games. Unfortunately, the the Ling all in did not work versus uh, Dragon at all. And I know Gypsy has some of the absolute best SCV control that I've ever seen. There are sometimes I watch it and I'm like, how did he do that? So if Patek ever gets in a mode where he feels like he's got it all in versus Gypsy, I think he's in trouble. So I think. Viewers need to keep that in mind. If he sees, if you see attack being aggressive, could be doomsday for him because Gypsy is very, very good uh, with Marines in the early stages. So I hope we see, I hope we see some macro games from attack. With that said, players are ready. Aztec again as our starting map. Let's get right into game one. Okay, in the mid left position, coming off of a victory versus Ziggy, it is Gypsy. And then in the bottom right, our Zerg player, the one and only Patak. All right. Just want to mention something on Gypsy's SCV control. We did see excellent SCV control save him in game one against Ziggy. And just. Bringing it way back, I remember the first time I played Gypsy, it was in BSL, I guess Chobo League it was called then, maybe like six seasons ago, seven seasons ago, probably more. And I was facing Gypsy on Longinus, and he did 10-10-10. And it wasn't the tank control that killed me, it wasn't the Marine, it was one SCV getting behind my goons and stopping them from moving. And with that SCV alone, I lost three Dragoons to the tanks. So yeah, yes. Gypsy has excellent SCV control. Yeah, seriously, no joke. Uh, like I'm sure everybody that's been to the stream where I'm say where you know his uh, donation emote or whatever, where it's like, is that Flash? Like legitimately, there are times where I'm seeing I'm like, geez, dude, like it is incredible. So we may see that if Patek gets aggressive. This time around, not going to be aggressive though. It is going to be a 12 hatch opener from Patek. Meanwhile. You were stating earlier that Ziggy is a mech player. I know, I know for a fact Gypsy, not a mech player. So we're probably going to see Bio at most. If we don't see Bio, it's going to be like a 1-1-1. One, one, one. But generally, he's just a standard like two racks or eBay opener type of Terran player. Yeah, and here we have Gypsy looking for the overlord. He doesn't see it, so he knows... Uh... Uh, P-Tag, P-Tag is at bottom, right? Now this is curious, sometimes Zergs don't scout the right way and then you do this and then they were at top left all along. Yeah, that's one of the reasons I don't do this scout is because I feel like I might miss it and a lot of times, well not a lot of times, but sometimes you run into the type of player that just does a random scout the wrong direction and I'd rather just, you know, just go the normal route. Now, meanwhile, we see Patak is doing the typical opener here. It is a two-minute gas, so that's going to be pretty darn fast. But if you guys have been watching ASL, Scan has been pointing out that because it is... Or, okay, I won't speak for Scan, but if I remember correctly, because it is not like a 210 gas, that means that we're not going to have the inner third hatch, so that's something to keep in mind. And we have Gypsy seen 
the 12 hack so it's just gonna go for that command center right away we have uh extra gas here from patax because the pool wasn't complete and we actually have speed first okay so never mind what you said earlier we are gonna see some aggression gypsy does know this though but he the lair could also be at the natural so this isn't a tell right away gypsy gonna check the natural see the lair morphing now so Ooh. he has no information that this is speed first yeah this is gonna be a dangerous situation he also didn't see like lings pop out at the natural he didn't see excessive amounts of lings pop pop out into the main and Terran, just like Protoss, wants to streamline their build as much as possible. Okay, he even misses the additional links being built. So this could be devastating for Gypsy. He needs to get up a bunker. You can see Patax trying to hide those two links on the outskirts of his base. And I think he did. Wow, this is so razor thin from Patak and this might, oh, he built a bunker preemptively at the natural. The question is, is Will speed kicking? Oh, somehow he already knows. Yeah, Gypsy sense, maybe it was uh, not seeing an extra drone at the natural, but their speed is actually done already. So it's a pretty fast speed with the uh, speed first and Gypsy making a bunker and a depot here to help out. He doesn't have any SCV, so Lynx can sneak in, but he's gonna lose several of them before they get into the main end. This is four Lynx left over. It's gonna be able to get some damage done, but I don't think it's gonna be enough to make this worth flying. When we have the SCVs, like already killed one Ling, we yeah, have a lot more Lings incoming. Uh, what is Gypsy doing here? It's only three Lings left in the main, but the Nat is a threat. It could get busted here. Yeah, the, he needs to pull SCVs on top of that Marine or on top of that bunker right now because 12 Lings are coming into his base right now and they are going to get on top of the bunker. There's no reaction and this could be the killing blow attack on top of all the Marines, but the, the Marines did do a lot of damage. You can see the SCVs are going to kill the majority of these Lings. Now he needs to pull some SCVs. No, the Marines are out of position. Okay, this is where the SCV control comes into play. I think he needs to just give this up. Yeah, he does pull back into the ramp, and that is nicely done with the SCVs, as I talked about. He needs to get some fire bats and medics out, though. Oh, wow, Spire's already halfway done. This is so low econ. Yeah, this isn't one per patch. This isn't anywhere near that. All Gypsy has to do is not die, but the he links have an eBay. are buying. Okay, yeah, no eBay, no. He has an academy, but the eBay is what he needs to deal with the first initial group of mutas we have the second gas on the way but this is so few drones like you need 10 drones on minerals to support two hatch muta non-stop muta so this is going to be mostly a mix of muta and ling so gypsy can still survive here he's going to get the scout like all he needs to do is count the drones once he realizes that then he can uh like adequately defend his his base because i mean the first six mutas are going to come out and the turrets are just going to be barely in time, I think. Yeah, they should barely, literally oh. barely be in time. Okay, never mind. I thought we had... Uh -huh. I thought we had some more links at the front, but that was uh, the Gypsy moving out a little bit with the fire bats. And there we have the first few turrets. He has medics finally. He's not going to have range, I think. Is that... That's probably still stim. I'm not sure. Yeah, it, it should be stim, and turrets, I think, are 25 seconds to build, and mutas are, like, an equal amount of time to build, so you have to factor in travel time, too. That means that these turrets should get up. Look at how razor thin this is. 200 at the last moment. He does need to repair it, though, but Patak not able to get on top of the turret in time, and that's going to buy... Gypsy enough time to put up a second and third turret. And with the turrets up and running, I think Patak has missed his window of opportunity. Now, Gypsy, in his last BSL run, he lost to Oyo, of course, but he also played True Touch, where he died to a Ling all in a couple of times. So uh, that's the last thing he wants to lose to this time around. He has eight meters now, Patak. He can get some damage done, but you look at the drone count, there's only one drone mining at the natural. So this is very, very all in. Yeah, now remember, Gypsy did lose a few SCVs. Okay, maybe not. He has a lot at his natural, but that means he is undersaturated in his main. And this is something I talk about on stream a lot. You really do have to have good saturation. Otherwise, you cripple your econ, obviously. So Patak, even though he's got no econ at his natural, uh, he does 
have a better shot than uh, I was anticipating. Okay, wow. Marines or Lings are going to jump on that bunker, but Firebat dealing a ton of damage, and those Mutas are not getting the shots that they wanted. Seven heavily damaged, may be able to pick off the bunker now, but the bunker already did the damage it needed. Yeah, Patak was not expecting those Firebats in that bunker. And we have seven Mutas, Gypsy adding a third back, so I think this is a good play here. He really needs to build out his Marine count. Like the only way he could lose from this position is just the mutas do overwhelming amount of damage but so far gypsy holding on looks like he's gonna lose a couple more marines here this depot is exposed but not the biggest loss he will yeah. be supply blocked though yeah losing the depot is fine he just needs to make sure he gets this turret up now meanwhile his gas was pretty darn high so i'm a little worried that maybe he missed range i didn't get to see if the academy was blinking or not I still didn't get to see, but regardless, the muta count is now at only six. Yeah, it's not it's not blinking right now, so he may have actually missed range. Not too sure. Meanwhile, muta or spire has been done for a while, so plus one weapon could be coming in relatively soon for Patak. Decent muta micro here from Patak, just denying these turrets from going up and getting stray marines here and there. These marines definitely don't look like they have range. I've yet to see an engagement where. Looks like another turret gonna get denied, and Patak is doing a good job with these mutas. Yeah, the mutas are doing. I mean, he's not killing a lot of marines, but he's picking off straggler units here and there. He's picking off SCVs, and if you look at supply, it's 45 to 42. It's much closer than I was expecting here in terms of supply. Now he has 11 mutas. He's gonna jump on these turrets, and. Okay, three Marines and a turret is going to push this back, and Gypsy is going to move out, but this could be a mistake. Yeah, I don't... Gypsy should scan the natural and realize there's only one drone on, on mining. No need to move out here. He's adding more turrets. Trying to get a good angle to get these Mutas from, but you can see finally there, the Mutas, uh, a slight misstep, and he loses two. Yeah, but Gypsy trading pretty darn well with his Marine Medic now. You can see Factory's about to finish too, but the turrets pretty skimpy at the barracks and he is going to move out he almost kills a mutilist there and now patak is going to have to make a decision does he go for the base trade or does he try to defend this marine attack and behind this gypsy has five racks so he can afford to lose this army he's got so much production yeah you can see patak actually floating a lot of gas that's just it just shows oh. that he hasn't had the economy to make non-stop muta yeah, he just doesn't have the money. Supply block comes in. He's going to catch another Overlord. Now, Gypsy may lose his entire army here, but look at how gravely injured those Mutas are. Four of them, five of them deeply in the red. There goes one of them. Even though this is, what, five, four Marines? He kills, like, three Mutalists. Another, oh, another one. Down. Oh, it hurts. And Patak, he cleans it up. But at what cost? There's just so many Marines being produced by Gypsy right now. Yeah, and well, I, that Overlord, I mean, look look at the mineral patches in the main. Patak has maybe eight on minerals, so he has way too many on gas compared to his mineral. He needs two more on, on minerals to produce nonstop units. That's why he's floating so much and losing those Overlords additionally. And now, I mean, he's just, he's in big trouble. Yeah, he's crippled, and you can see that the Mutas don't have plus one armor or plus one weapon, so they can't knock down turrets extremely quickly even if they were to go for a backstab now that was an armory if i saw correctly so he is just going into valkyries just trying to completely shut this down no need to even mess with vessels why mess with vessels where you only have one where you can only have one irradiate might as well just go into the mass valkyrie play now patak has found a bit of an opener right here but he just doesn't have the critical mass mutas and now that patak realizes that oh hey you're not defending it he now has to turn around and try and make sure that he just doesn't outright die to this small attack from Gypsy. Yeah, it's not like Patak can go and make a couple sunkings back at home. He doesn't have the economy for that. Yeah, Patak still floating about a thousand gas. He desperately needs drones, but at the same time, he desperately needs to build more Mutalists. He's just stuck uh, in, a, in a very difficult situation. And the Marines are just relentless, picks off two more Mutalists, and it's just he's just moments away from sealing the deal here. I mean, I guess Gypsy could overstem potentially. 
Yeah, but it doesn't matter. The Valkyrie's gonna be out soon, and this is five barracks back at home, so just non-stop marine production. And we say Patak is gonna be able to hold off, but for Gypsy, this is a victory on its own. He's keeping the meters away from his base while he attacks and macros up. And even though he's gonna lose this group again, as the Marine group dwindles, he still manages to get Mutos and it looks like the tag realizes it's all for not and taps out. Yeah, he taps out and it looked dangerous for Gypsy in the beginning. I thought, wow, actually these lanes are gonna surround the bunker in the game, but clutch SCP control, like always, saving the day. And that puts Gypsy one game away from moving into the round of 16. This actually felt a little bit similar to the Ziggy game where Gypsy sees the threat, but he doesn't prepare and he almost dies, but Clutch SCV control saves the day again. And I mean, if he just left three SCVs at the bunker, he holds that a lot easier, but nonetheless, good play by Gypsy. And I mean, good attempt by Patak. He almost did it there. Yeah, he did almost do it there. So Patak, he is still obviously a dangerous threat to Gypsy. He's gonna have to be on his guard going into game two. Now we've got Patak's pick coming up. We already saw Patak pick a revolver, if I remember correctly. And even though you're saying that's a heavily favored Protoss versus Zerg map, uh, he still picked it. So that tends to make me think that it, we're probably gonna see revolver again. At least that's what I'm expecting our good night. Um, but yeah, what do you think really Patak should have changed there? Like if he built two drones, was that enough? Because then he would have had more, he would have had more econ to discontinuously build Mutalis. I think you need 10 drones. You could do that exact same build and have two more drones. And then your economy is in a position where you can make nonstop Muta, get plus one weapons, and then really commit. Because the way he was doing it, he was halfway between making Mutas and then he didn't have enough minerals to support. So he just had floating larva. To do two at Muta, the, the all-in version, you need those 10 drones. Yeah, as we pointed out, he was floating about 1,000 gas for- the That's 10 mutalis. Yeah. He could have I mean, had two control groups of mutas by yeah. that point. Yeah, with plus one. And we know that plus one weapon mutalis deal a lot of damage if you're ever out. And and you also have to remember that Gypsy, in the early stages because of the links, he had four fire bats and two marines. Like he really didn't have much anti-air. So it could have snowballed, uh, maybe not pretty quickly, but going into the mid game when he was only on two racks or three racks, it could have snowballed with the yeah. If that first, like if that first turret doesn't get up, if Patak has plus one on the way, like things, yeah. Terran stays in their base and it looks like they can hold, but then they just get overrun with good micro and good positioning of the mutas. But it just it, it was never gonna end up in that uh, scenario with just eight drones on minerals, just not enough. Yeah, and even though it was turn rate 16 in the game. Patak's muta control was pretty darn good there. He just simply didn't have the DPS to knock down the Marines. So we're about ready to get into the game, guys. I guess we're just waiting for the players to set up, and then we're going to find out whether Gypsy moves on because he's one game away or whether Patak will live to fight another day. Again. So we apparently are just waiting for a attack, and then we're going to get into our final game of the day. Have you been watching ASL this season? Yeah. What have, what have your thoughts been on ASL? Has it met your expectations? I know you're a Protoss fan, of course, and there's only It's more. been very exciting, not only PvZ, but TVZ as well. Uh, Zerg's really mixing it up, and I mean, many has been playing excellently but in a way that no one else plays no one else plays like this and no one else can play like this i think and then you have uh light losing to zerg like just playing unorthodox like i thought that was the strangest thing when you're so strong with standard play uh no need to mix it up but light decided to go for that and then he got smacked and then we have rush just a very very strong player overall and i like the way the meta keeps evolving uh somewhat due to the maps but also due to the players just innovating non-stop yeah the games have been fantastic and i agree with your statement about mini i watched him and when i watched him like dude this guy's at 500 apm it's chaos but it's controlled chaos he's so so good 
Well, let's get into our potentially final map of the day. It's going to be Revolver, guys. Game two of our elimination map. So, in the top right, he's got a win here. It's Patak. And in the bottom left, just narrowly surviving, it is our Red Terran, the one and only, the Big Jip. All right, so the Big Jip, uh, not a big fan of eight racks, so I don't think we're gonna see that here. I, again, expect to see just a typical opener. And I think because Patak just failed that all in, I think we may actually see him try again to go for that Soma build that we saw in the ASL with the three hatch try and split the map, try and go ultras, because he played it versus Gypsy. Gypsy's the one that actually took him down. And I think Patak probably analyzed him like, hmm, well, you know, if I had built Lings here, if I had built a Sunken faster, I could have held it. So I think we may actually see that uh, same opener this time around. Yep, probably. And I think Gypsy is going to play standard almost no matter what. Like, no reason to risk an 8 Rass here or, <clears throat> like, Eight racks, and then all of a sudden you're facing a pool for us, and then uh, maybe you should have just played standard. And like you said, Gypsy, not one to go mech, always goes for bio. And it looks like Patak, like you said, just gonna go for 12 hatch, and Gypsy racks on 11. Very standard. Yep, everything pretty normal. Now we're gonna have the 12 hatch come in. Remember last game we saw Patak go for a 12 hatch, and then into the typical pool extractor opener but we have seen a lot of zergs innovating these days soma in particular we've even seen hero i will say innovating simply because he's the only one that i see do it in the sense that he builds like two or three extra drones before the pool uh, this time i don't think patak built any additional drones so it is okay he's gone past okay i thought we we're gonna see a third hatch somewhere before pool but that is the pool and gas going up pretty much at identical time. Gypsy going to see the Overlord realize their cross and get that second Devo right away. Sometimes if you scout the 12 hatch right away, you just go command center on 15. But when you're cross, you don't get that information. And here we have Gypsy playing safe. I've seen it where turns sometimes they assume 12 hatch. They just make the command center right now. And then six things get to their net and they're like, oh, crap. Yeah, that, that is true. Now, Gypsy, he does scout and see that uh, there is no Lings flooding across the map. He does put down that command center off of just one Marine. Now, I know Gypsy does like to mix in going for a fast plus one weapon. We have to keep an eye on whether he'll two racks even with the cross spawn scenario or if he... Okay, he does decide on the cross spawn uh, cross spawn scenario he is going to double racks anyways and this is fine he is just going to rush that academy and get his fast upgrades as usual and then we have protect with the natural Ooh. setup no reason to make links here especially cross map he does have four which is just fine because it's a lot easier to kill the scv with four as opposed to two it's not like a pro where it can regen slowly over time but it does have the extra hp not speed first just layer right away and just droning up here and playing standard 100 gas should see speed started pretty soon yeah we had like a 318 refinery timing so that means whoa he has a okay there's the academy i'm like whoa we don't have an academy <laughs> but there it is tucked away in the back of his base so he's gonna have uh, a pretty darn fast upgrades coming out of the, that academy. Meanwhile, his second barracks, I think it's already done. SCV still alive, just like in the games versus Dragon. Attack having a tough time killing that worker. And there's a, that's a complete scout for Gypsy. He gives him all the intel he needs. He knows it's not like hidden lurkers or something. So that's great for him. Also gets to count on the Ling. Yeah, and the second gas timing as well. And there it finally goes down and it's 4.30. He already got the full scout. Gypsy's SCV saturation at the natural. Looks like it's good. He just didn't split the SCV, so they're mining one per patch. And looks like the academy just finished now. Yep, getting so everything. Mm -hmm. okay, everything normal. Third racks as well. Yep, third racks. Comsat coming down. 
Oh man, it's really bugging me, these SCVs. I think that's too many SCVs on those bottom five patches. Well, I think he also, uh, yeah, it is a lot of SCVs on the two, two bottom patches. I'm sure at some point Gypsy will realize. But we have Patak sending out a drone to try and take a third base. It's going to be dangerous because Gypsy is about to move out uh, with this small task force. Or maybe not. He's, he is just sitting. Oh, nope, scan. Sees it right. I mean, he's just going to see his fire finish. And Gypsy, oh, looks like we have a small supply block here. Very annoying. Yeah, not a big deal. A lot of times you can resolve this supply block by just building your command center comm sats if you have them available and we do see that it is just one comm sat for gypsy no need to build a second comm sat because he did get a scout off with the scv to check for or to see the spire now you can see that he sends an scv across the map because he expects there to be a drone somewhere so when he sees that there's no hatch at top left he's gonna know it's bottom right and unfortunately for patak he sent two drones bottom right he really wanted that base <laughs> Whoa. That looks like okay. he's going to improvise and take that third yeah. extractor right away. Okay. So Looks like guess. Patak is a fan of trapping the Zergling to stack with the Mutas. You don't risk uh, yeah. forgetting about your Overlord this way. It's like the, first, the first few Mutas are here. It's only five, so it's not really a big threat. You can't really do much. You can pick off a stray Marine here or there, but otherwise, six, seven is the magic number, so you can one shot those SCVs. And again, a couple. Yeah things to notice this sunken is completely unnecessary uh, cross map uh, looks like Patak is a little bit under droned as a result well we do see Patak going for a small counter attack with the lings but I don't expect this to really do much damage at all maybe not even get this turret nice attempt though but it would have been much better if he had something like eight links or something where he could have ran into the main but you just are sharking around trying to find the best angle unfortunately the big gyps on top of it not allowing any access onto those marines and continued muta production i don't see a hydrogen anywhere i don't see an evolution chamber anywhere yeah and third gas already there of course we have double starport from gypsy here you're just trying to get a good angle here looks like a one link muta counter attack here on the turrets you might be able to get two turrets Gypsy's just moving out, heading towards that third base, and looks like a couple mutas go down. Now he has no defense for this third base. Yeah, this third base is not long for this world, and I think actually Patak's best option is to try and just counterattack because I don't think he can save this base. Uh, this is a lot of Marines. There's also four medics for support, so there's a lot of healing power. And he already popped one of the turrets. So we'll see what Patak... Yeah, he's going... I thought he was going to go for a counterattack. Looks like he kind of hasn't decided just yet. You gotta make a decision, man. Okay, he's gonna go to the main now. Completely open. Yeah, completely open. One turret on the barracks. Gypsy does have Marines, but Patak's just waiting too long. He's taking too much time. I think Sunken's at the natural. He really has to go now. Get on top of these barracks and try to delay the tech. He said the Mutos have plus one weapons. You can see because they two shot at that turret. And here we go. He's getting into the main. He's gotta be careful not to just leave the Mutos camping on top. Looks like, oh no. Oh, those mutas are not firing. Now they're getting into the sweet spot that every Terran hates. It's the back side of the mineral line. And there's just not enough Marines. But luckily for Gypsy, he's still got a lot of Marines out in the center of the map. And he did scan and see that there were four sunken. So even though he's got he's to pull his SCV, SCV line here and he may lose a few SCVs, he knows that Zerg's econ is equally, uh, equally diminished. And now he is might save the day with just these six marines yeah miss volleys there from protect and now he's just over committing he only has three mutas oh, no. they're probably gonna die they have no escape now and he's sending more across the map but look they're just eating turret and marine uh, fire here i i'll say luckily for Patak, there was nothing in that bunker so he may be able to knock that down but other than that not the damage he really needed and he doesn't even get the bunker he even loses a muta there loses two mutas and another one is dangerously close now he's down to just eight mutas and you can see there's not a lot of drones mining that natural i think he's taking a third base at top middle but gypsy's already got his science his science vessels are coming out yeah gypsy already fully teched up 
first vessel. I was gonna have second and third one pretty soon. Attack still stuck on mute attack. He does have plus one, but nothing else in his favor. And I mean, Gypsy could just play patiently from here and wait for a couple of radius before he moves out. And attack without any further attack. I'm not sure he's gonna how he's gonna hold the big push. Yep, here go. Okay. Oh, okay. He, he just... knows it. Yeah, he, knows <laughs> he just taps out, and that's it. Gypsy, he's gonna take game two. And unfortunately, Patak's BSL run is going to end, but the big Jip, he's going to be moving on. Yeah, so Dragon and Gypsy advance out of this group. Uh, 2NA going to represent uh, the continent in the round of 16, at least. Yeah, always happy to see NA players make it out, but Patak and Ziggy both had good games today. Ziggy, I think, got a bit unlucky versus Gypsy, especially in game one and then patak man he almost had it with the ling attack and he had great games versus dragon so let's I not think... forget patak was one good engagement from advancing first out of this group if he had just beaten yeah. dragon in that second game yeah for sure patak could have made it out in first place so i think next season he fixes a couple things for sure he can make it into the round of 16 or beyond potentially so I look forward to seeing him next season but that is going to be our two finalists today, Dragon and Gypsy. And that's going to be the end of today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Of course, we're going to get a look at our rundown. We see Dragon beating Gypsy, Attack beating Ziggy. Then pretty good games. Dragon versus Patak, Dragon making it out. Gypsy 2-0 Ziggy and Gypsy 2-0 Patak. And he moves on in second place. So nicely done. And now I think we're going to go into our Patreon screen. Again, we want to thank you guys so much for not just watching BSL, but also supporting BSL with the donations and also our Patreon supporters. At the $100 level, we have the one and only Star Lover. At the $50 level, Striker and Grail. $30 level, Two Apocalypse. And $20 level, Cuz Christian, Christian Eddington. Martin, Harzmar, LML, and Lingen Pump, and all you other Patreon supporters, thank you so much for supporting the BSL. Without you guys, uh, BSL cannot happen. So if you can, definitely think about becoming a Patreon supporter. And remember, at the $10 level and above, you get all the replays of the BSL. So definitely something to consider. And I think that's going to be it for us today, guys. You got any last words, Seriosity? Oh, just uh, see you all guys tomorrow. I think Big Jip will be joining me and uh, another good group incoming. And that, that's about it. Yep, Group B is going to be fantastic. And as Seriosity stated, it's going to be the Big Jip and the Big Seriosity. I am not going to be here on Sunday. But again, it's going to be a fantastic group. Casting is going to be great. And I look forward to watching it uh, on Twitch tomorrow. Thank you guys so much for watching. And we'll see you. Uh, at the next cast.